Cross is by Dennis Scott that's tonight. Please call for a major event exemplary in the finest tradition of intercrossing athletics. We remind out these coaches and spectators this contest is being conducted with the highest expectation of fair play and good sportsmanship. We also remind you that this is a hardworking individual who displays fairness and integrity. Please be the respect and observe. Thank you for your cooperation and support. And now taking the field is your Silver Mustang Band and Color Guard. And now, ladies and gentlemen, under the direction and band direction to John Miller, the Silver Mustang Band will perform our national anthem. Captains taking away the BL gaps today for Liberty. Number seven, Luke Pringer. Number 25, Zach Griffin. Number 44, Curtis Brown. And number 52, Lorenzo Hidalgo. Captains for Stockdale, number two, Austin Gutierrez. Number five, Elijah 
14. Number 42, Nick Maiden. And number 58, Gio Ramirez. Well, a very good evening, everybody, and welcome back to the Kern High School District's live streaming football here in Bakersfield, California tonight. We're at Stockdale High School, the Mustangs, taking on the Liberty Patriots in a big, big rivalry game. It's a league game, of course, and as always at this time of year, it's a very pivotal time of the year, a very pivotal game. And the Mustangs taking the field at home. Below us, the black hole, the legendary student cheering section. And as you remember, from any game we call it Stockdale, the public address announcer is kind of a play-by-play -play guy himself. And we have the speakers right above us and right below us, the black hole. Always a raucous, crazy occasion. And now I bring in my partner, legendary BHS alumni Hall of Famer and UCLA Bruin, Brian Adams. Brian, welcome back, buddy. We saw you down there talking to Coach Nixon. We tried to get with Coach Helton, but he was busy. Always a big night with the Mustangs and Patriots. Oh, yes, it is, man. You know, these two teams will battle out. We've seen them through the years. No matter the names change, but the game doesn't. You know what I'm saying, Vance? I know exactly what you're saying, Brian. The names change, but the intensity does not. Fans still piling in here. Last game we had here was Clovis and Stockdale, and that was a barn burner. People, were, the AD was getting ejected. It was a, <laughs> it was quite the game at the, at the end of the first half. And I remember it took us about 45 minutes to get out of here. There were so many people at the Clovis Stockdale game. Same environment here. A big, big night. Again, welcome everybody. Kern High School District's live streaming football. I'm Vance Palm. Brian Adams to my right. Kevin Willie to my left. It's going to be a big one. It's going to be a fun one as the Stockdale Marching Band exits the football field. The captains have already left the center of the field and come back to the sidelines. The officials. They're having their meeting, and Brian, every game's a big game this time of year in October, but just looking at the officials tonight, I was walking in kind of looking at them. They even know we got a big one in front of us. Well, Vance, you know, all, all you want the officials to do is just be consistent. Whatever they're doing, be consistent. And I think when you, you know the crews know it's a big game, they're going to come out, and that's their goal too. They want to be consistent. No, no official wants to get anything wrong, and they're going to come out tonight, and I think they're going to officiate a good ball game. Because again, Vance, these two teams got a lot of stake right now, especially for Stockdale. You're 0-1 in the league. As tough as this league is, one loss you got a chance. You don't want to get to two losses in this league as, as good as these teams are. Liberty defending Valley champions have had a roller coaster year so far. If you talk to Coach Nixon or any of the teams, anybody involved with the team, they say it's been a lot. Of, it's been a mixed bag, so to speak. Um, and I'm paraphrasing when I talk to the people in the Liberty um, School and the sports department it's uh, it's been a year of highs and lows uh, but tonight there's going to be a lot of clarity for both of these schools at the end of four quarters we're about to get going liberty will receive the football and we'll break into some of the storylines here as we get going but first and foremost we want to get this ball up in the air and get this thing going kevin how you doing tonight buddy feeling good very good kevin willie got here and got us set up early in the evening Appreciate it very much. So it's going to be a wild night. The black hole below us, the speakers right above us, a packed announcer's booth up on top. Liberty will receive. Stockdale will kick off live streaming football for the current high school district here in Bakersfield. This ball may go through the uprights. It may go through very close. Big, long kick. The wind coming off the... Northwest, it's coming directly into the face of the Liberty offense. Well, Vance, you know, one, one thing about Coach Nixon, we've covered him for many years, Vance, and he does a great job of keeping his offense, keeping the defense off balance. He likes to run the ball and pass the ball, mix it up. He rarely goes all out one thing, but if he has something rolling, he will go with it. And it'll be interesting to see what happens right now in this first series, what kind of tone his Liberty offense can set. They break out a wide set. Bice in motion. It's going to be a run play to the right side. Right between the hash marks. Get everything kind of settled in that first run. Sam Stewart Jr. on the run. You know, that's a good move right there for the Stockdale defense. Stout up in the middle, Vance. They didn't give him any yards. Three yards. You get three of those, they're going to be punting the ball. Three receivers break out to the left side of the line of scrimmage. One back, back there in the backfield. 
Low snap. Ball is batted down. Incomplete pass, so a bootleg here to the near side to run and throw across the body, and Isaiah Hill is the quarterback. He came right towards us, tried to square up, but by the time he let go of the ball, he was in big traffic, and the ball got batted down. Yeah, he almost threw it right there in Brandon Dunn's <laughs> chest for a pick six right there, Vance. That's a uh, great play right there by Dunn at that linebacker position coming off that edge. You know, and again, another sophomore quarterback, Vance looking at Isaiah Hill here from Liberty. All of a sudden, it's third and seven. One back, Sam Stewart Jr. back there with Hill. Hill takes the snap, drops straight back. Look out, he's got trouble, but he lets one go down the far side. It throws up and it is caught. What a reception. Oh boy, it waffled in the air and Luke Fringer comes down with it. What a big catch. Hans, what a play. We saw last week a big play by a receiver starting off. Here we go right here on the wheel route. Great job of going up for the ball at the high point and snatching it right like a basketball player on alley -oop. Ooh, man, the ball waffled a little bit in the wind. Now Hill on a keeper, makes one move, two moves, and actually bought himself three yards when I thought he may go down on the backfield. So the sophomore quarterback, Isaiah Hill, and that's gonna be something we talk about a lot tonight, sophomores, not just in this game, but what we saw last week, some serious sophomore action in the BHS Garces game. So a nice first down, long pass by Hill, and then he buys himself a couple yards there. Second and eight, maybe. Second and eight. Three receivers out to the far side, the right side, the big side of the field. He looks that way, wants to go again. Looks like Hill might keep it himself. He gets across the line of scrimmage and basically goes for a one-yard gain. Nice job by those DBs for Liberty. And it really was, man. He Stockdale, really, sorry. Yeah, Stockdale. And the, the guy that did a good job out there was Craig Gradowitz. Now, Craig Gradowitz had to try to do a double move on him. He stayed right with it, didn't go for it. Was able to force Hill to run. And you know, Vance, I gotta give a shout out to Craig Gretowitz. His dad played with me at Basel High and ran track when we won three Valley titles. If I read between the lines, what you're saying is that you're old. A little bit behind you, partner, a little bit behind you. <laughs> I, I set myself up badly. Third and seven, three down here on the near side. Hill takes a look, takes the snap, and it's a handoff. He gives it to Stewart Jr. Stewart Jr. needs some room. Cuts up and gets a nice big game. Oh, what a nice big run. I'll tell you what, the patience of Stewart was basically the catalyst for that first down because it looked like he was down here. You know, Vance, you're exactly right. I mean, he was very patient. He, they, they strung him out. He just saw a little bit of a, cr a crease. He accelerated through, was able to pick up the first down. Another big third down play for the for the Liberty Patriots. Two for two on third down on this drive. I tell you, Hill hung on to that thing for the, as late as he could before he handed it off. Three receivers out to the right side, the wide side of the field. Hill hands it to Stewart again. Three yard gash up the near hash to about the 18 yard line. So Liberty, as you say, exactly what you said. Coach Nixon likes to mix it up. Run, pass, pass, run, run, pass. And it's been a successful execution of that mindset here early. Two receivers split out to both sides right now. Stewart, the lone back next to Hill. Hill stands in the shotgun at about the 22-yard line. Mustangs have four down up front. Stewart gets gang tackled at the line of scrimmage. Maybe he got one. That'll bring up third and a long five. You know, Vance, this is a down right here. The Stockdale defense has to slow down a bend, don't break situation. They've been great on first and second down. It's been third down, third and eight, third and six, when they've given up the big play for a first down. So they have to do a great job right here of making sure they don't run the ball, but also covering the pass the way they did on that second down. And I talked about Greta was early. I saw that defensive captain for Stockdale giving the orders. Well, he, he, you know, Ortiz is the big man here. I mean, he, he does it all. He runs the ball, he plays defense. He's gonna make some plays. He's definitely a guy to watch. Here's a nice one, third and five. Hill throws it quick out to the right side. Can they pick, oh, big hit, big contact, short of the first down. And uh, it was caught out there by Levi Smith, but he was hit short of the first down marker. No huddle offense, I like it. Three receivers split out here to the near side, which is the wide side of the field. And Isaiah Hill, no huddle offense, takes the snap. He's gonna give it to Stewart. Stewart's gonna bust through, and they're gonna pick up the first down. Well, that was impressive. First down, Liberty. Vance, that, that offensive line right there for Liberty really got off the ball quick on that. Once that ball was snapped, they took off. They created a nice little crease for Stewart Jr. to go through, and he ran right through it. 
Again, three receivers split out here to the left side, right below us. On a first and goal from about the eight. They give it to Stewart again. Stewart tries to battle to the goal line. Do they shove him in? Is it a touchdown? Goodness, his half his body's in there. I don't know how it couldn't be. Touchdown, Liberty. Well, Brian, if you're going to write a script for an offense on the road for a first possession, converting three out of three first downs, long passes, short passes, strong runs, pretty well scripted, and the actors played right along with it. Well, you know, Vance, they absolutely did. If we get ready to see this PAT right here. Oh, he missed it. So that, that could come up loom big, Vance. You know, we've seen these games. Missing those extra points could loom big. But we're sitting here, Vance, and you talked about it. They couldn't have scripted a better start. As Josh Robertson missed the kick, they couldn't script a better start. Like you said, two big third downs, got it. The third down play, although it wasn't the first down, it put them in a situation where they gave them opportunity to go for it on fourth down, and they gave them a whole bag of trips to work with. You had to still worry about the pass and the run. So they executed well on that. Then the next, the next play, as you said, like rugby, just push them through. You, Brian, you made it, sorry, you corrected me so elegantly. It was four, It was third, and they didn't get the third, but they didn't. A no huddle got them the, uh, the first down on a fourth, even more impressive. So Coach Nixon obviously very pleased with that. That little stinger at the end doesn't help the miss PAT. Well, we saw a lot of that over the last couple of weeks. Uh, even on the road at a BC call we had two weeks ago in El Camino, it was a funky five-point difference. It ended up, um, you know, it was just weird missed PATs and how they play a role. You always say it early in the game, oh, that might come back. So many times it does. Well, Six-nothing. I'll tell you what can come back. You kick this ball to Elijah Ortiz. I think they're going to get a chance <laughs> to return his Vance because of the wind. I don't think you're going to be able to kick the ball as far to get it down there. So I think Elijah, he would not get the ball in my opinion. Rennick is on the left side. Ortiz on the right side if you're the receiving side of the football. It's going gonna, it's gonna to have to go to somebody. Oh, my goodness. It's a nine iron. It's going to be short. It's going to be taken at the 25. So they're going to start with really good field position. Noah Burkhart and Brian about a month ago, Clovis was here and we called this game. Burkhart received probably, I'm going to say, five of those short kicks on the kickoff, and it was an excellent advantage for Stockdale. They always had the ball right about the 30-yard line. Again, it happened. So first and 10 for the Mustangs. You know, and it's not a knock on Burkhart, but you want him or you want Ortiz? No doubt. Him. And that's what I would do, too. I like that play. Make him, make him go, Vance. Make him go 72 yards, 73 yards. First and 10, Mustangs. Misdirection handoff play. Zachary Green, the five foot nine, 170 pound. Another sophomore there, Vance. And he did a good job right there of just finding, staying with it and, and picking up about three or four yards. Took what they gave him. Second and seven. Ruley, the quarterback this time. An end around. And Ortiz almost broke it. But a really nice play out there. And he literally tripped him up. Luke Fringer got him, or it would have been a first down. Oh, he did. Oh, they gave him the first down, looks like. Ooh, the move the boy. So they got, they got the first. I'll be honest with you. I thought he, thought he fell well short of that. Uh, but it's first and 10, 39-yard line for the Mustangs. And you can see right there, Ortiz is, is excitement as soon as he gets the ball. Very quick, explosive, able to, has great balance and can move in and out. Great player to watch. Jacob Ruley, the quarterback. He gets Walter Bryant over here on the near side where he wants him. Ortiz with a carry right up the middle. Liberty says no dice, no gain. Second and 10. Well, oh, they're going to give him two on that. Boy, oh boy, some nice little spots here. For the Mustangs, so they didn't. I'm going to say they gave them one. Second and nine, 6:40 to go here in this first quarter. We're at Stockdale High School. The Mustangs welcoming in the Liberty Patriots tonight for an incredibly important and pivotal league game tonight. One receiver breaks out to each far side. In motion is Green. 
Ruley, they stay on the ground. Ortiz, this time comes to the near side, and picks up two yards, three yards maybe. It's gonna be third and a long six. You know, and that run doesn't look like much, but he avoids a tackle to the line of scrimmage, which would have been maybe no gain or loss, and is able to pick up a good three more yards that puts him in, like you said, a third and five and 36. We talk about that's manageable. You know, at any level, third and six is manageable. And that's what you want to get your offensive chance on third down. It's the little manageable. things, isn't it? It sure and is. And actually, they say third and five, so now it's even more manageable. Under six to go here in this first quarter. A pair of receivers, well, now three receivers on the left side. Really, first pass of the game, and it's not a good one. It's incomplete, a little early. Got rid of it quick, and he was trying to lead Walter Bryant. And let's see what happens here. Looks like Coach Shelton's going to say, nah, we'll go ahead and punt this ball with the wind and try to flop this field. You know, I think this early in the game, and that's a good decision. You know, the players were saying, let's go for it, but they're always <laughs> going to say, let's go for it. <laughs> yeah, what player doesn't want to go for it, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, don't forget, the quarterback is the punter. Oh, it went off the back of the helmet of one of his players, and it hit a Liberty Patriot. Oh, goodness. What a funky play that was. The punt went off one of his own Mustangs' helmets, and then it bounced off the, the cleat of Marco Maitia, a Liberty driller, didn't even know. The driller, it hit, the, it hit Maitia in the back of the heel, and a very alert Patriot jumped on her. That could have been, what well, was a live ball, actually. Oh, sure was, and that could Oof. have been dangerous right there. It could have gave Stockdale the ball in great position. But right now, I think the Stockdale defense, they did very good on first and second down, even third down when they went for fourth. I think they have to have a series right here where you get them off the field. Three and out, turnover. And, and get your offense back to the get your offense back the ball and see if they can't put some points on the board. Hill pops out in the shotgun. Has Stewart Jr. on his left hip. Two receivers on both sides. Hill is gonna hand the ball out to Stewart. Stewart takes it and gets outside. Oh, that gets tripped up at the 40. So it looks like they've got a nice relationship there with that zone read. And Austin Gutierrez came up from that free safety position, made a great tackle right there. Because that was going to be some big yardage come in advance if he gets by Gutierrez. 520 and counting. Brian Adams, my partner to my right. Kevin Willie, our production director, or director of production, or director of production director to my left. <laughs> Hill stands in the shotgun at 35. Play action, bootlegs to the left. Wants to go long with it. Now he's got a ton of room. Oh, he throws, and he had at least... They're going to say it's a complete catch, but he had as much room to run as he did pass, but there is a flag on the play, so an impressive pass out there by Hill. And they might say he crossed the line of scrimmage right there, man. Yep. And that's, how painful is that when he could have just kept running anyway? Yeah, and, and I thought that's what he was going to do. Once he had that much room out there, that much green to run. And that's pretty funny right there, the, the, the student you section. You can't do over. that. You can't do that. That's pretty good. Well, by all accounts, they're right. Oh, yeah. I told you I was into fitness, didn't I? Fitting this whole pizza in my mouth. <laughs> Second and 12, four and a half left in this first quarter. Three receivers right down here on the near side, the left side of the line of scrimmage. Play action. They throw across the middle, and they have his man. Nice little five-yard pickup. Gets him back inside the original line of scrimmage. So they've got about, let's say, third and seven maybe right around there. So quick little hit right there. And, and that man, brings up third and seven. I, I'm really liking Austin Gutierrez watching how he comes up. And only 165 pounds. I mean, he's bringing it, man. Austin's the senior leader for the Stockdale defense. Now big third and eight. Hill takes a low snap, wants to throw, finds his man, and that was not a good pass, threw it way out in front of him. So that's gonna be incomplete, under a lot of pressure, and one of the big boys that was really putting the heat on him for Stockdale. And that's uh, Daniel Negron. He really came uh, hard on that pressure and also at 6'3", 250, and Graves did a great job being in position on the cover. So that's what we talked about. They need advance. They need to get them off the field, get the ball back, and again, don't punt the ball to them. Negron, don't. big, big guy. So here we go. Let's see. Again, they have Ortiz. 
Looks like it's going to be a fair catch. And oh, it's a really super high vertical punt. And it's down at about the 34 yard line. We want to thank our sponsors, the current high school district, PAV Solar and Communications, Premier Lighting, Kern Schools Federal Credit Union, and of course, Tony's Pizza. We'll have our Tony's Pizza Player of the Game Award later on this evening. Kevin Willie has 33% of the vote. I have 33% of the vote. Brian Adams has 34% of the vote. It's become a real fun part of the evening. We'll go down in the field and present the $20 gift certificate and a Tony's T-shirt. We kind of wait to the very end and present it. And we're, uh, we're eight for eight on approval from the teammates and coaches. So here we go. First and 10, Stockdale, 340 to go here in this first quarter. High snap taken down and given to Gutierrez. And he gets maybe one yard. You know, when those snaps are high, okay, they can handle it. They can manage it. But it sure so throws off the rhythm for at least half a second. Yeah, oh, it sure does, man. So, I mean, because, again, it's all rhythm, right? I want to get – I got a fake here, a read here. So, you don't want to have to go up for the ball. Now you're delaying your read. Right. And you're giving the defense a chance now to get in position. And you see Liberty made a uh, tackle with a one-yard gain. And if you're Gutierrez, you, you, got your, you got your motor started, and you're ready to roll and get going, and you got st you got to stutter for just a second on that. No gain, they say. Second and ten. Ruley looks over here to the near side. He's going to keep it. Ruley, now he's in trouble, and he gets hit hard. A big, big hit up there, and, of course, it's Sam Stewart, Jr. The sophomore running back also brings the wood, and it's going to be third and ten. No gain there for Ruley. I'm glad, Vance, he got down on that one. Yeah. I, th I thought that was going to be bad <laughs> news right there, but great move to, again, avoid a tackle. Instead of getting sack, tackled for a loss or uh, uh, at the line of scrimmage, he makes a move, gets down before Stewart Jr. comes in. And, again, third and third and eight, third and nine. These are the kind of downs you want to kind of stay, with, stay away from his offense. 2.20 to go here, first quarter. Ruley takes the snap. Ortiz up the middle, and he's going to get the first down. Oh, what a big run. 48-yard line inside Liberty Territory. He got hit in the interior part of the defense actually delivered the blow, which helped them, and they couldn't wrap him up, and he picks up a big, big first down. Woo! Man, he's just so elusive. His ability to move his body and avoid tackles, but he doesn't get hit solid. You hit him kind right, of at, a, at right, an angle, and right. he just kind of glances off, and you keep going. That's a great point. I love that play call right there. They're looking for a pass. You give him, you draw a play to your best player. That's an awesome call right there. Now Ortiz just keeps turning and burning. He gets to about the 45-yard line. Under two to go here in the first quarter. Kern High School District's live streaming football here in Bakersfield. We're at Stockdale High School. The Mustangs welcoming in longtime rival Liberty Patriots. Patriots coached by Brian Nixon, defending Valley champions. The Mustangs coached by Brett Shelton. Stockdale's 4-2 and two overall, 0-1 in league. Liberty 4-2, and 1-0 and in league. Ruley wants to throw. Finds his man, and it's, oh my gosh, he was intending his pass out there for number 33, Harrison Taylor, but it was, should have been picked off by Zach Griffin. He'll be the first person to tell you. Oh yeah, you don't get those too often as a, as a middle linebacker. You gotta, you gotta pull that one in your hands, but. <laughs> I mean, if you're a DB, you say, you know what, someone's coming my way again tonight, many times probably, I'll get another chance. But those linebackers, they drop those shirt things and their well, buddies look they, at them and they, go, they get a serious? lot of chance too. They don't get a chance to they don't make them that often. But, but uh, <laughs> oh. he, he, had, he had it right there and he knows it. And he had a lot of green to run too. Yeah, he, he did. It. So Stockdale dodged the bullet. And again, I wouldn't be surprised we see uh, Mr. Ortiz touch the ball again. Third and seven. Bad snap again. Ruley takes the bobble. He's in trouble though. He knows he's in trouble. He goes down at the 49 yard line. Now he's getting thrown back even further. So a frustrating event for Jacob Ruley, the ball was snapped. I don't know if it was that unmanageable, really. He just kind of bobbled it. It, it, was high. it was high again. So they've got some issues with the snap. And I'll tell you this, if my center is not on defense, guess what we're going to be working on right now at my quarterback? They're going to go to the sidelines and practice about 50. Yeah, we, we need to get a few of those before we get the ball back. That brings the ball back exactly midfield. Dab smack in the middle of the football field. Now that's a perfect snap. Now Ruley's going to go for a punt. It's a nice rugby punt. Might be returnable. Oh, goodness. He lets it keep going, and doggone it. If you're a Liberty Patriot fan, you're thinking to yourself, hey, Fringer, pick that thing up. But now it ends up on about the seven-yard line. So that worked out for the Mustangs. Half a minute left here in the first quarter. 
you know, Vance. And, and again, Stockdale's defense answered. The offense is they're, they're, they're having a problem being getting a rhythm going. They get a couple big plays from Ortiz. They get move the chains, and then they get a setback. But uh, the defense can come out again, hold them again, so your offense can get kicking in and, and, and make the plays they need to make to put, put some points on the board. Because you're going to have to score to beat Liberty. Now Liberty comes onto the field. Their quarterback, Isaiah Hill, behind center. Stewart Jr. behind him. Just a straight run right up the middle, and Stewart gets up to about the 10 yard line. And for all intents and purposes, unless they go no huddle and hurry this thing up, it's probably going to be, well, you never know. 19 seconds left in this first quarter. But I, you know, if you go the other way, you're going to have the wind right, behind your back. Right, right. You like throwing the ball anyway, so I, I don't see him snapping the ball knowing Nixon. That's going to be it for this first quarter. Six to nothing. The Patriots lead by a touchdown. We'll step away from the mics for just a second and let you soak in the sounds at Stockdale High School. Welcome back, everybody. My son Noah is shaking Brian down for cash. Hey, hey, it's time to fight. <laughs> Start of the second quarter, Stewart with the pitch out to the far side. Oh, he flag on the play. It looks like it's probably going to be a holding call. How much Brian give you? What in the world? 20 bucks. Oh, okay. It's take your kid to work night. Yeah. Last week I had young Cap Adams. This week I have Kaylee Bug Adams. Uh, beautiful daughter of yours and that good looking son of mine. I can't believe they have to pay for anything. I, mean, I, know. I, I would give good looking kids like this free stuff. Okay, get me, uh, Kevin, you want something, bud? Bring me some chocolate, son. Bring me some chocolate. They waved off the flag. Thought it was going to be a hold on Stewart's run to the far side. The ref was standing right on it and threw it down, but he pulled it up. So really strong run by Sam Stewart Jr. And the official was standing there and tossed the flag. Thought it may be a hole, but they've waved it off. So it's going to remain third and a foot. You know, when you got Nixon, you got to be real careful because this is when he, he'll take chances, man. Third and short, I've seen them do play action and try to go deep on people. Fumble! Fumble! He may have fallen forward for a first. <laughs> okay. I thought he actually fell forward for a bit. No, they lost the yard. They're going to have to punt the football. So, again, Brian, Stockdale defense really playing some good, tough, solid D. You know, Vance, first series, gave a touchdown. Last two series, they're forcing punts. And you have to go back a little bit. Now you have the win behind the punter. So, they're going to get a little bit of distance on the punt. But, again, I, I want to get Ortiz touching that ball. Elijah has touched the ball for me. Here's a high, oh, a big booming punt. You're going to get your wish. No, he does call it. Oh, and the <laughs> he backed up. That punt was so big, so booming by Sean Pasco. What a punt. That thing was easily 50 yards, and it was about 50 yards in the air, and it just kept going and kept going and kept going, and ultimately 
Elijah Ortiz did call fair catch, and it still kept going. You know, and that's the punt when you want that punt. When I'm a return guy, that's the punt I want. I want that long driving punt because that's going to give me time to catch it and then make a return. But he was trying to get, I think, too, the wind might have been moving yeah, the ball yeah. on him, too. So no you can see how he was kind of moving back, lost his balance, forcing for Stockdale. The ball didn't hit him when he fell. Okay, Ruley now, the quarterback for Stockdale. Hands the ball. Ortiz, Ortiz. Oh, lowers the boom. Big contact out there. Luke Fringer and Elijah Ortiz getting to know each other on that play. I like it. Fringer, the 6'1", 160-pound singer. There's some uh, senior. There's some bloodline football. His dad, dominant force in high school and college. Well, he comes up, man. So, I mean, he, he's not worried about contact at all. Neither was his pop. Just underway, second quarter, six to nothing. Liberty leads by a touchdown, missed PAT. Three up front for Liberty on the defense. Expecting run, and that's what they get. Ortiz doesn't get much. Nice job by Liberty. Boy, they read that well, knew what was coming, and they got nothing. Brings up third and very long. You know, and this has been the down where Stockdale's offense has really struggled, fans. They just haven't been able to really get a, a, a good play going. They've picked up a couple first downs just on Ortiz making big plays with his legs, but eventually they have to be able to put the ball in the air and, and, and complete some passes on third down. Third and six. Really? Little shuttle pass, and it's picked off. The big fella stood right in there and got it. What a play by Lorenzo Hidalgo. The senior, right in the middle of traffic, and the ball got tossed to him, and Hidalgo says, thank you very much. Yeah, he's going to be in the film room telling, oh, yeah. telling, telling uh, my man Zach, now that's how you catch the ball, brother. That's how you <laughs> catch the ball. <laughs> but uh, uh, awesome job right there. Way to read it. You know, he keyed on the best player, saying, hey, I know who's getting the ball. He went to it. Awesome job by Hidalgo right there. Liberty offense right back on the field again. Hill hands the ball to Stewart. Oh, it's a double. And Stockdale defense. Oh, ball! So Johnny Balderas on the re end return. He didn't get a lot out of it, and then he coughed the ball up. And, and they got stripped by Ortiz, and then Austin Gutierrez makes the play, falls on it, and gets the ball back for the offense. Again, defense comes up huge again for the Stockdale Mustangs. Can the offense get something going? Wow. So in a span of two plays, they've switched offensive and defensive lines twice. It's back to Stockdale football. Ruley looks back at his running back and says, we're going this way with it. And it sure worked. Bye-bye. It sure worked. Ortiz goes out at the 25-yard line, chased out by Johnny Balderas. But at the very last second before the snap, Jacob Ruley looked back and said something to Ortiz right before the snap. Yeah, and, you know, he did, he did a great job of, of reading the hole again, accelerating through. I thought he was going to take off and get down the sideline, but you can tell he's winded. He's been working hard, Vince. we got to remember, he's playing offense and defense and the return game. So he's been working hard for this first quarter and a half, and he's doing a great job over there. That's just what the doctor ordered if you're the Stockdale Mustang. Oh, boy. Now you got to order him some oxygen and get, his, get him back on the field. <laughs> well, the running back back there with him now, Zachary Green. They faked to Zachary Green. And this time it goes to Gutierrez. And no gain on the play. So a lot of action-packed plays here in the first quarter and three minutes here. The breeze starts to really kind of pick up here. And I know what some of you out there are thinking. Vance, it's full moon. Aren't you going to howl and do all your full moon stuff? Not so fast, my friend. Sunday night. Sunday night. The 16th. Kevin, last time we were at Stockdale was the full moon. I'm still gonna get you, I'm still gonna have you get it tonight. Here we go. Second and eleven. High snap again. Goodness. Elijah has to come down with it, wants to throw. Now he's gonna be past the line of scrimmage, has to go out of bounds. So 
we have seen, I would say, at least no less than six high snaps. I mean, they're high. Elijah's tall. You know, Vance, I mean, he has to jump I'm up. I'm sorry, Ruley. Ruley's almost six foot tall. Yeah. They have to do a better job of those snaps. But he did a great job, again, of saving it. They didn't lose the ball on it. And he's able to even pick up a yard, too. Now, again, here we are. Third down, and here's Craig Gravitz coming in the game. And he's a receiver for them, as well as a defensive back. Ruley gives the signals, calls it out. Steven Rennick out here on the left side of the offensive line. Way out on the far right side is Jalen Smith on the far right side. Ruley, high snap again. Takes it down. Ruley backs up, pedals back, wants to throw. Oh, he gets hit hard. A huge hit. He's leveled out there by Zach Griffin and Brock Anderson. They hit him simultaneously. And Jake hard on the ground after. Remember, he's the punter, Vance, and he's slow to get up. And Brian, I don't know. I mean, it's probably a mixture of the great DB play or the I don't know if the routes are crisp, but he has not seemed to have a, a lot of options out there on the receiving end. Well, Vance, like I said, he, he got up slow. He's walking over slow. They hit him hard on that one. So the quarterback punter walking off he, slow on he's this. He's holding his head too, fans. I think they need to check him out. Brain left row, going back to punch formation. So Stockdale's going to punt. It's a little pooch. And nice. Got a nice job right there. Ball goes out of bounds about the eight-yard line. So well done. Well done. And Rain Lay Terrell just kind of pooched it out there. With a nice little kick. We saw this last week with, with a guy, with a, a young man getting hit. Man, so they got to get him checked out, man. So he's, he's not looking good. He took a big hit over there in the 25-yard line. And he's kind of just twisting his neck and kind of walking around getting some bases. But I would imagine he's going to have to hang on for a few minutes here. Well, Liberty takes over on the nine-yard line with seven and a half to go here in this first half. Six-nothing, they lead by a touchdown. Zach Griffin gets a carry this time. Griffin. Oh, and the ball touchdown. stripped out. Touchdown. Are you kidding me? Robert, Nick Maiden went up, took the ball right out of Griffin's hands and said, thank you, I'll score. I mean, Vance, you, you, you couldn't script that like that. I mean, he just ripped it, just clean ripped it out of his hand. For those of you that might have stepped away for in. a second, <laughs> the handoff was to Zach Griffith on the right side. He started to take, going on, he took off on his run, and Nick Maiden went up there and just took it right out of his hands and walked in seven yards for a touchdown. Stockdale's on the board. Wow, man. What a change of events. Two defense possessions, two fumbles for Stockdale. Offense can't score, defense puts it in. Tovar for the extra point. That's up and it's beautiful. 7-6. Mustangs on what's turned out to be the most unpredictable last three minutes of football. An interception by a lineman or defensive lineman and then an end around strip fumble on the very next play. Oh, yeah. Then they have to punt the football because their quarterback just got banged up. Liberty takes over first and 10 on the first play. The running back has the ball taken right out of his hands, just stripped out. And Maiden was five feet from the end zone and just kind of trotted in. What a big play. And now we're at 7 6. Stockdale. Crazy. And some, I mean, Vance, the defense has, keep them in, has kept them in this game. You know, they've come up with big stop after big stop, two turnovers, back-to-back -back turnovers. I mean, defensively, the defensive coordinator, they didn't like the first here, but they're liking everything since. Wow, we. My partner, Brian Adams, send me that nice picture we took. You and I and your daughter and my son. Brian Adams and I called easily well over 100 football games television for many many years and Kevin Willie was right there with us how uh, sometimes things is much more, the more they change the more they stay the same this wind can't stop the long leg of Luke Tovar Tovar goes into the end zone it's going to be first and 10 Liberty so we've got some Mustangs tossing the ball around down here for 
possibly a change when they get the football back, not sure. Jalen Smith has played some QB, of course. And Jalen Smith is a big time baseball prospect, man. Oh yeah. No stranger to the limelight here. 7.20 to go in this first half. I'll go down with about a minute and a half left. Brian will take over the reins up here and I'll get ready for a halftime interview. Stewart gets, the hand Stewart gets the ball handed to him and he is thrown down super quickly. And I'll tell you what, you talk about being there to pounce and being on it. Brian Abbott. Wow. The senior nose guard defensive tackle, 6'1, 236. And Abbott threw him back for an eight yard loss. Wow. Well, the, the Mustang defense has turned up their level of intensity and execution right now. I guess And Liberty so. has to answer back. Three receivers out to the right side. Hill takes the snap. He's in trouble, makes one good move. Oh, goodness. He is a electric runner when he gets some space, but that Stockdale defense doesn't give him much. Yeah, Li Liberty needs to get some ball security going on. I thought ooh, that one ooh, almost ooh, fell ooh. on the yeah, ground right there. But, you know, six minutes left, plenty of time. You know, Nixon's been in hundreds. We talk about we've done 100. Nixon's probably done 300, 400 games in his career. So he knows that's what he's doing. He's going to keep calm, doesn't panic. Hill, Hill rolls to his right. Let's one go. He has a man open. Oh, geez. Well, not, not, not super open, but at least he had his guy beat for a minute. It was intended out there for Seth Krause. And Hill's got a nice arm. I like what I see. Oh, yeah. I, I like what I'm seeing, too. You know, uh, Gravis, again, was in good position. But the way that route was in that ball, that ball's going to throw yeah. you open. Yep. All he has to do is put a little more air and get it going towards the It looked like he was running the corner route, but he threw it more in field. Oh, they're punting again. That was quick. Perfect deep snap. Here's a long one, and it's going to be a fair, fair caught. Yeah, got a and fair nice job, down. nice job with that heavy wind up there. He did a yes. nice job of, Ortiz did, of just pulling that thing in. And with 5.51 left here in the first half, first and 10 for the Mustangs. Thank you, son. Appreciate it, buddy. That ball just hangs up there, man, like a knuckleball. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Kaylee. Didn't have Gatorade. <laughs> just, just water, huh? <laughs> Brian, All we right. need to sit him down with some tri-tip sandwiches. Thank and, you. Uh, Thank you, baby. Boy, Brian and I are loving life tonight. I know the water wasn't $20, baby. <laughs> <laughs> First and 10. Hand off. Yeah, you, you, both you and I sent our kids down. We both gave them a $20 bill each. I got, I have M&Ms and a dollar back. I'm kidding, son. That's new math, man. That's yeah, the new math. You're right, digital math. <laughs> Thank you, boy. Second and nine. 520 to go here. Brian Adams, the BHS driller, myself, Arvin High Bear, Kevin Willie, West High Viking. Ortiz looking for some space. And he gets awfully close to the first down. I think they might have knocked him out at about the 45. They're going to say the 45. And that'll be third and two. Third and two inside Patriot territory right now. We'll have a nice halftime show for you with the Stockdale Mustangs marching band. Fantastic color guard under the direction of David Michael. Kevin David was my drum major my sophomore year, Crimson Bear Brigade. Third and two, big play. Two backs back there. High snap for Ruley. Ortiz! And what a great job of the off the line blocking. I mean, he was, he doesn't get touched going through the hole. He explodes through like a shot out of a bullet of a gun. And the Mustangs are rumbling down the sideline, fans, for another six. That was quick. That was a quick, quick score right there. Now Tovar 
with that strong left leg. And it's through, and listen to the black hole. 14-6, they are going. Now Vance, Stockdale didn't break the defense, gave the first touchdown that drive. They've been stout since. The turnovers, stop forcing punts. Can Liberty answer? That's going to be the question now. Can Liberty regain their composure and answer and move the ball down? 14-6. Stockdale up on Liberty. Liberty scored quickly on their first drive. They had a couple of big third down conversions and then a fourth and one conversion. They got in. The only snafu was the PAT that leaves them at six. But then their offense has been silent. The Mustangs have capitalized defensively. One of them was a defensive score. And then on this beautiful run play, the Black Hole now starting to let the Liberty crowd know they're here. Can this ball get deep? I don't know. And oh, look at that. The, he hooks it out of bounds. So now Liberty will get it at the 35 with the wind behind them and a sense of urgency that will be needed for them to try to make something happen here with 4.57 left here in this first half. Man, you know, you got to give Stockdale credit. They've done a great job so far in this first half. The defense has regained their composure, has stopped Liberty Patriots ever since the first series. The Liberty defense had been had done a nice job until that one play right there, uh, limiting the big plays. They only get up two, but now Ortiz is rolling. But they've got great field position right here, Vance. The 35-yard line with 4 minutes 57 seconds left. they got plenty of time to get down there and put some points back on the board and answer back. Hill, the quarterback, on a keeper. And a really nice job by that Stockdale defense, staying home, everybody doing their assignments. And he didn't get much, got tackled by Brandon Dunn. Dunn another, with a nice tackle. He's another sophomore, man. Wow. It never ends. I was talking with the Bakersfield Californians, Trevor Horn, down on the grass before the game. and. In the fall sports right now, not just football, but the fall sports, there is a plethora of big name sophomores. Second and seven. Liberty needs to get down close to the end zone. Here's a little pass inside here. Oh, and he loses his footing. Caught out there by Grant Bice, but he lost his footing and maybe picks up a yard. And that's gonna be third and six. So right now, Coach Nixon, in a chess match with Coach Shelton to try to get that ball down the field. And here's a tough, tough third and six, the wind picking up. And Hill. That's not going to do it right there. On a stall delay play, keeps it himself. And uh, no dice. Fourth and five with three and a half to go here. And watch co what Coach Nixon right now. No, he decides to bring the punt team out. Sure, delayed reaction here. But the punt team comes out. Pasco, the punter. Ortiz. Wants to return one. Fair catch again. That's going to get. Oh, he hit it. It's a fumble. It hit him. He's got to get on it. And it's still on the ground. It might be a safety, Vance. Liberty wants to say safety. The players are saying safety. They're saying touchback. And the official saying touchback. So they're going to say it was a live ball in the end zone. And Coach Nixon's looking for an explanation. It, there was no question about it. It hit Ortiz. We saw it. He knew it, or he wouldn't have sprinted full speed for it. So he sprinted back for it, and then the ball, there was a scrum for it in play. And I think that's what they're saying, Brian. It was in play, and then it got knocked into the end zone. And that's where Stockdale jumped on it and made it a touchback. Well, they dodged a, a huge bullet right there, Vance. 
just what Liberty was looking for, a big play, and they almost got it. Now, with 2.58, another high snap. Ruley grabs it, and a flag on the play. At the end of the beginning of the play and the end of the play. So two flags on the play. We haven't seen a lot of yellow tonight either, Brian. No, it's been, it's been a real clean game by both teams, man. And you expect that out of Coach Shelton and Coach Nixon. But a, a flag at the beginning and a flag at the end. Let's see what it is. 14-6 to six is the score. And it's going to be a holding on Stockdale. They'll march that back. Again, we want to thank Kern Schools Federal Credit Union, PAV Solar and Communications, Premier Lighting, the Kern High School District, and, of course, Tony's Pizza. Tonight we'll be making our presentation in a new, fabulous, Brian, I want you to see this incredible new container, this fabulous presentation. We'll be handing out the $20 gift certificate and the T-shirt. And it's going to be in a Tony's Pizza pizza box. Everybody in the whole stadium thought I was bringing pizza. Man, you want to catch attention? Walk into a place with a pizza box. End around, faked it. Now Ruley wants to go high in the air. He throws it midfield, and that's going to be dropped, oh. and it should have been caught by Brandon Dunn, and he had a little angle to keep on running. Into the – oh, there's a flag on the play as well. Vance, I mean, you can't throw a ball better than that one. I mean, he put it right there for him to catch it. It would have been a moot point. Illegal man downfield anyway. Well. But he threw that high and up into the wind and really had some distance on it into the teeth of that wind. I thought y'all did, good, did a good job of setting his feet before he threw that ball and, and really put something on it. Like he said, into the wind. That was a good job. So second and ten. It was declined by Coach Nixon. He wants another shot at this before the half is over. Two backs back there with Ruley, and they handed another flag on the play. Boy, oh boy, and I, look, I think it's going to be offsides on Stockdale. The flag was thrown, like, instantly. What would you say? We went from... No flags, a lot of flags. I shouldn't and, have said anything. And, and, yep, in just about two minutes. <laughs> oh, it is going to be called against Stockdale. So with two and a half exactly, 2.30 left exactly here in this first half. Stockdale up 14 to six. It's gonna be third and seven. Again, Coach Nixon declining. He's declining these penalties. He wants to get the football back. Doesn't wanna have him keep giving him plays and chewing up the clock. So smart move by, by Coach Nixon. Now it's third and eight. They're gonna get the football back here if they can hold him right here. Ruley takes the snap, runs towards us to his left side. What's he going to do with it? And he gets rid of it. A dangerous pass out there. Picked and off. it is picked off. Sam Stewart Jr. ends up with it. It was bobbled. It was deflected. It was hit out there. And you got to give credit to Emmanuel Cardenas, number 20. Emmanuel Cardenas stuck his hand up there and batted it around. And as far as ill-advised passes, you can put that one in the dictionary to look that up. Oh, yeah, Vance. That's got to be that's either run out of bounds or throw out of bounds. Either one. Either one. But what's not advised is to throw it in play. So, wow. Now it's 2.14 left in this first half. The ball ends up in Liberty Patriots' hands, and I think Coach Nixon's thinking, are you kidding me? Thank you. With 2.14 left, Liberty has a shot here to get in the end zone. And they have plenty of time, fans. They have to get their rhythm back on offense like they had in that first series. Here comes Stockdale. Bice. Look at Bice. Grant Bice, touchdown Liberty. So a costly turnover by the Mustangs late in this first half. And on one running play, the strong, stocky, big senior, Grant Bice, jams it into the end zone. Well, fans, you think they're going to go for two? I would imagine. I would imagine. With 2.06 to go here in this first half, Coach Nixon, it's 14-12. The first PAT was missed early in the game. And, you know, you, and this early you don't need to go for it, but, uh, uh, you know, if you're struggling with your PAT and you're not sure, then this is what you want to do. So we have a timeout called here. Liberty takes a timeout, talk things over. Coach Nixon wants to have a quick little chat with his team. Uh, we'll give you a quick recap here because I'm about to head down and do an interview. I don't know who I'm going to do the interview with yet because 
protocol as we do interview with the elite, the coach who's in the lead on the way into the locker room, and we talk to the coach who's trailing on the way out. But we don't know yet. It's 14-12. If Coach Nixon decides to go for two and they get it, I'll talk to the home coach. So I guess what I'm saying is either way, I do know who I'm going to be interviewing. It'll be Coach Shelton, right? So that, that, That'll work. <laughs> I mean, unless something happens in the last two minutes besides this. Uh, you're right. What am I saying? So it started off with Liberty marching down the field. They scored on their first possession. Really nice drive. Missed the PAT. Stockdale couldn't answer for quite a while. Then they finally did with a defensive touchdown. A really unique play where Robert Nick Maiden ripped the ball out of Zach Griffin's hands and walked into the end zone for a touchdown. And then very quickly after a couple of switch possessions, interceptions, and fumbles, then all of a sudden we get to see the big, beautiful running style of Alicia or uh, sorry Elisha Ortiz, and he just galloped down the field for a big touchdown. But then an ill-advised interception pass thrown by Ruley late here in this first half now gives it a 14-12 score with Liberty attempting a two-point conversion. Here's Hill with a spread out line to the right side. Hill runs. Where's he going to go with it? Hill's got to throw it now. He's in trouble. He's going to launch it up there, throw it up there, and it is no oh, good. They say he dropped he the dropped football. The ball. Oh, wow. the ball hit the grass. He threw it to Stewart. Stewart's looking at officials like he had it. But the official right there, right on it, tapped the grass and said, no, the ball hit the ground. So both PATs now for Stockdale, I mean, sorry, for Liberty, unsuccessful. 14-12 ball game right now. And Vance Hill did a great job <laughs> of changing direction, buying himself some time, and found a, a, a Stewart. Stewart Jr. wide open. He wasn't able to catch that one, but he caught the one that counted. That was that interception yeah, on the deflection. Did. So they're doing all right, 14-12. And, you know, remember, Stockdale still got plenty of time. So anytime you got Ortiz back there, so anything happened with his big playability. And if push comes to shove with Stockdale, you know, you go in at halftime, make some adjustments offensively. Your defense, you're doing, you're doing just fine, except for the one big play there. And uh, see if you can get your offense a little more consistent for Stockdale, put some more points on the board. And, and Liberty just has to figure out offensively what, what, what they're doing because they're really struggling on the reads and, and who's getting the ball. Um, and they haven't been crisp on the offensive play. Kern High School District's live streaming sports is what you're watching. I'm Vance Palm, Arvin Bear, Brian Adams, BHS Driller, Kevin Willie, West High Viking. Brian's in the Driller Hall of Fame, UCLA Bruins standout. Here's a pitching wedge taken at the 20. Fumble! They may have it back, Vance. They may have it back. Big scrum for the football now. Who's going to have it? A high lofting pitching wedge kick. It's always and funny how it's by your sideline. Everybody over there this way, this way. But we haven't got it. one official to give well, it. They're a still clear. down there fighting for it. And who's it going to be? It looks like the celebration has subsided for Liberty. But who is it? Who is it? Have I seen an official say anything yet? I don't know, but look how Liberty many, football. But look how many pay they got to get themselves off the field. And they have to be ready to go. Oh boy, what a turn of events! And as we saw, Isaiah Juarez come out of the scrum with the football in his hand, number eighty-five. He comes out of it with the football in his hands. Juarez saying, "I've got it," and he's coming over to the sideline saying, "That was mine," but that may have been after. <laughs> The officials decided it's Liberty football. So well, once it goes to a scrum, it's a free for all. Yeah, I guess so. And I'll tell you what, Brian, uh, Stockdale, for all the things they've done right on offense the last couple of possessions, the last possession was not wise. And now on their special teams, they cough up an easy pitching wedge kick. And now Liberty's got the football again with 204. Oh, they're explaining something right now to Coach Sheldon, so that's what's going on there. But, you know, okay. And not only did he just he just ran a little bit before he got he won, he knew he wanted to run with the ball but he just moved a little early. Lost You're right. It wasn't a fair catch. It wasn't a fair no. catch. Right. He wanted to go. And he just moved a little early before he secured the ball. Two oh four to go here in this first half. Fourteen twelve. Stockdale leads by two points, but Liberty has the football back with two oh four to go here.
Hill stands in the shotgun, takes the snap, hands off to Stewart Jr. Stewart Jr. cuts back upfield. Flag on the play, two flags. Flags flying everywhere. Partner, I'll hand it over to you. I'm going to go down on the field and get ready for an interview. Sounds good, Vance. As Vance gets down there getting ready for the interview, we have a couple flags on the field right here, so let's we'll sort this out and see what's going on. We have a holding call against Liberty. And they're going to march that back 10 yards against the Patriots. You know, and the Patriots since that first drive just have not been crisp on the offensive play yet. They have a minute 56 left, try to get in the, in the end zone, and Elijah Ortiz talking to his defense, and he's been big all night long on both sides of the ball. And the Stockdale defense has done a great job tonight since that first series. Here we go three trips out to the left. He'll ask for the ball, ball hit the ground. Picks it up, and there's a rush right there, and he's down. And a big hit by Josh Haddad right there. As he gets a huge sack. And puts the Liberty Patriots in, in second down and 27. And out of field goal range, so said Liberty's offense just has not looked crisp since that first drive. Even though they scored a touchdown on that running play by Bice, they just have not had anything really going their way since then. This time they have trips to the right on the bottom of our screen there. Hill's looking over, asks for the ball. A draw play, and it's wide open right there by Stewart. He can get a block. And he almost gets all the 27 and more up as he get a first down on a second and 27 on a draw play. And the Stockdale defense, who since that first series has done a really good job. Right there, got out of position, and it was wide open. And Stewart Jr. went for about almost 30 yards on that, that run and not only puts him in field goal position, but with 42 six, six seconds left, plenty of time for the Patriots to put something on the board. And touchdown, oh my goodness, what a catch right there. Luke Finger just jumps over Ortiz and snatches it for the touchdown. And within two minutes, the Liberty Patriots come storming right back. 18-14 now, as they put the six points up. And let's see, it looks like they're going to go for it again, go for two again. Well, what a catch right there by Fringer jumping up and making the play. He made a big catch earlier in, the first, in that first drive, and here he goes again. He likes to high point that ball. Great job. I'll tell you this. Robert Nick Maiden's having a big game defensively. Gets an interception right there on the two-point conversion. 18-14. Stockdale have to score still. A touchdown to get back in the lead. A field goal puts them down by one. But what a big turn of events right there. And I thought Hill was going to wheel out to the side and run out there. He had plenty of room to run for the two-point conversion. With the Stockdale defense. Two big plays there. Puts the team down, puts the team down by four points. But the, the Mustangs will get the ball back to start the half. And right here, you know, again, Liberty, I might push that ball up again and not take a chance on giving that ball to Ortiz and let Ortiz get him right back to the lead with a big run there. But good, good response back from the Liberty Patriots. Good response back by the Patriots, and the Stockdale defense has to answer. But I would pooch it again. That was a good play right there. You don't want to give Ortiz a chance to make another play on you. He's been huge on both sides of the ball. Forcing fumbles, making tackles, big runs. Back to and you know, we talked about last week, guys. Rance and I talked about guys being as advertised. Ortiz has been as advertised tonight. And Dunn does a good job of catching the ball there. 
I'd like to see my return man kind of come up and get it, but Dunn secures the catch on the kick and picks up some good yards and 30 seconds left. And the Mustangs are about the 31 yard line. Uh, 30 yard line actually, so we'll see what they do. They take a knee and go in at half or they try one run and play and see if Ortiz can break one. But this could be the last play of the game and Vance will now, I believe, catch Coach Nixon going into half. Well, there's a guy who can make a play is Ortiz. Oh, what a move on that little swing pass. Great call, I like that. He gets the ball in his hands. You get your best player with the ball, and he's making plays for you. He's been doing it all night long, and he just got tripped up from putting another six on the board there. And timeout here by the Stockdale Mustangs. So they're in business. 22 seconds. They still have two timeouts left, so plenty of time to get in a score position for a field goal. And, again, with Ortiz, you never know what he's going to do. He could break another big one. But Vance is down there with the ball, Stan Green. And he's getting ready for interviewing. And who knows, maybe he'll go back and he'll be interviewing Coach Sheldon if they score six on this series right here in the last 22 seconds. This has been a good first half. Another good week of high school football here. As the Stockdale Mustangs come out and they have three receivers Trips left on the bottom of your screen there. First down, Stockdale from the Liberty 43. And we got Ruley sitting there. He's looking for a snap. He sends Ortiz to the left, goes to him again. Ortiz looks to make a move. Want to get out of bounds here. Stop the clock. There you go. Good job right there. Six seconds went off the clock. And he picked up about five or six yards. Now, if you're the Liberty Patriots, you got to be careful. You can't get to thinking he's only gonna go to Ortiz because they can fake that to Ortiz and go up top on you and put six on the board right back on you. But the defense right there for Liberty has to settle down, has to hold right here. You don't want to give up any points going into half. And if you're the Stockdale Mustangs, keep riding your horse. Trips to the right this time. Bad snap, but he's able to pick it up. Throws it wide, oh, and drops. Incomplete pass as Walter Bryan drops the pass wide open in the middle of the field, and he has some room to run. It's about three seconds went off the clock with that play. And Jalen Smith brings into play. He said earlier he's a big time baseball player. Played on some US teams already in his young career. Here's the screen pass. Oh, another drop ball. And with seven seconds left, we gotta see what the Stockdale Mustangs are gonna do here. But I'll tell you this, we talked about Stockdale team uh, just missing a couple of bullets on them and, and Liberty the same way. Wide open right there in the middle, drop pass, another drop pass, and they had some blockers out there for them, especially with his elusiveness and his speed. Ortiz and, and the Liberty Patriots just miss out on a big play against them, but here they go. Ships to the right again. Draw play. And the, and the clock will stop with two seconds. And a timeout being called as they pick up the first down. And so far, this has been a good little drive right here by Stockdale despite the two drop balls with two seconds left. They're going to look for a play and try to put some points on the board before they go in and get the ball back. As the Liberty defense goes over, they're going to talk it over about, you know, making sure nobody gets behind you. Don't give up a big play right now and allow the Stockdale Mustangs to put six on the board on the right before half and get the momentum going back to their side. And also, they're going to get the ball back at halftime. So right now, if you're Liberty, you want to knock this ball down. Don't allow them to score, and if you're Stockdale, you want to see if you can put six up here. And if you don't, it's not a big deal either because you go in at halftime and you come out, you're getting the ball back. It's starting to move the ball on Liberty Patriot defense, so you're feeling good about yourself and, and a good ball game right here. <laughs> Only down points. Really. 
And that's going to be it, but I like that pass play. Add that back into your halftime. We're going to see Vance now as he's going across the field, going to catch Coach Nixon. And we're going to send it down to Vance, and Vance is going to take over and catch Coach Nixon and talk to him as he goes to the halftime. Nixon, I know you're here for your time. Ball, offensive side of the ball. Turnovers with. Defensive side of the ball for you. That first drive to open the game, Brian, you're talking about, well, couldn't be scripted any better. They get three-point conversions, a no-huddle, fourth-bound conversion. You walk that thing in, in kind of a roller coaster for a while. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate it. And that was our first half interview with a couple of technical difficulties. And uh, we're going to get right here, and we're going to see the Stockdale Mustang Band take us in the halftime. Under the field direction of drum majors Renee Akupan and Jonas Lovegreen, we present to you the sights and sounds of the Stockdale High School Silver Mustang Band and Color Guard as they present the Polar Express.
the drum majors of the Silver Mustang Band are Renee Occupon and Jonas Ludgreen. Color guard captains are Sarah Mitchin, Taylor Hopner, and Sonia Benavidez. Battery percussion instructor is Tony Sandoval. Well, all right, we're here with Stan Green. Stan, um, for our community watching, I want to give us your title at the Kern High School District. I'm the Director of School Support Services. Director of School Support Services means you're doing what? I have the best job in the state. I love it. I get to oversee all athletics and activities for the district, and uh, right now my bosses have kind of uh, empowered me to do a lot of really cool projects, so it's been great. For our audience, so they all know, Stan is the one that has been the driving force behind getting currenthigh.org, which, by the way, we have a new website coming out, a new uh, name coming out, and it's really going to start to grow. But, Stan, this is kind of your baby. What do you think so far? Well, first of all, it's not my baby. It's yours. Uh, you know, you and I have been working on this and talking about it for a few years, and I'm just very lucky to have had that relationship with you where we are able to capitalize on it. and. You know, I'm looking forward to being able to expand to other sports. Uh, we're going to do volleyball next week, as you know, and kind of move into some basketball. So it's, it's a great opportunity for us as a district to showcase our kids with professional talent like yourself and Brian Adams and Kevin Willie. When we started this deal with no advertising, every week we exponentially grew our audience and the word has started to travel. What's the, what are the feedback you're getting? And this isn't self-serving. I'm not looking for a pat on the back, but what is the literal audience saying out there? Well, you know, my philosophy anytime we do something is let's make sure we do it right. And so, you know, part of this whole thing was, you know, let's make sure it's in HD. Let's make sure we have the best equipment that we can buy, and let's make sure we have the best people working it. And uh, so the feedback has been tremendous because, you know, you're experienced in this area and Kevin's experienced and Brian Adams is experienced and, and we have sideline interviews. Nobody has that. We have player of the game where you're giving out players of the game. So we're just doing it right. And anytime you do anything right, people recognize that and they buy into it. And the buy-in has been tremendous. What an atmosphere here at Stockdale High School tonight. The band is just getting standing ovations the game is incredible the black hole in full force stockdale a great host tonight yeah this is pretty amazing like i said i've never seen a band get a standing ovation that was pretty cool but you know stockdale's got a great student body and great kids and uh so far they've had a great football game and they get the ball to start the second half and we'll see if they can turn into another barn burner for you stan thanks for your time thanks for getting this thing off the ground it's going to be a great success stan green everybody thank you brother back up in a minute And we're going to throw it down to Vancey's here with Coach Shelton. Coach, uh, make it quick here. Let's uh, let's go on the offensive side of the ball first half. What are your thoughts? Well, offensively, we got to execute blocks. Uh, flat out, we haven't been executing our blocks. we got to make sure we're aligned to sign it, and, and we execute, and we're not finishing our blocks. Let's go on the defensive side of the ball. Defensively, we had a couple blown, uh, blown assignments. Um, got to make sure we contain that number eight. He's a quick guy. And obviously, number five runs the rock hard, but we got to make sure we wrap up dry feet. 
kind of a topsy-turvy last four minutes of that first half. Yeah, we uh, we made a couple mistakes, um, turned the ball over a couple times. Good teams are going to take advantage of that. we got to clean that up. Where do you find yourself now in the thick of it here as far as mentality, philosophy of the kids, everybody everybody dialed in here? Win the down. Always win it. Coach, thanks, buddy. Brian, let's get this thing rolling. Sounds good, Vance. And we're going to get the second half kicked off in about 23 seconds. And Stockdale should get the ball back to start the game. In the first half, it was kind of a defensive struggle there. Both defenses kind of stepped up, made some plays, some turn costly turnovers, put points on the board for both teams. And we're sitting here at a 18-14 halftime score with Liberty Patriots capitalizing on our turnover actually to come back and get back ahead in the game. So, you know, with Stockdale, their offense started to get some rhythm to it, but they just weren't able to really have a continued drive. Their one offense score came off that big playoff Ortiz busting up the middle untouched. So let's see what they can do starting the second half. But they got to want they ought to want to come out and get this game started. And here they come out. Levy's over there huddled up on the far sideline. Look what they want to do. If Ortiz draws back to the ball, to the back to get, receive this kickoff, Vance will be up in a minute as we start this second half in this third quarter. The Liberty Patriot offense, if they're going to have a chance, have to get going. They have to do a better job than they did in that first half of being consistent as Paxton Winders gets ready to kick the ball. That was a little great halftime show there, and here we go now for the second half, and let's see if there can be some offensive fireworks coming as a high, soft kick. And Burkhart drops the ball again on that situation, and it looks like Liberty might have the ball again. There's another mad scrum for the ball, and Liberty has the ball. Oh, goodness. You know, at some point, just fair catch and secure the ball. Don't worry about running. Just fair catch and secure the ball. Boy, yeah, oh, you, boy. You know, how about that, Vance? You go in at halftime, you say, hey, we're all right. We're down four. We're getting the ball back, and then you don't even get a chance to get your offense on the field because of another muffed kick. Well, I just talked to Coach Shelton. I know you heard that. I was down there talking to him about it, and he goes, hey, win the down, win the down. Yeah, we had a couple mistakes there, special teams, but we're going to start the ball off here with the first the second half, and just like that, Liberty, first and 10 from the 25. Partner, thanks for doing all the covering you're doing. Oh, no, I'm having a good time with you, Vance, and another good week for us. Hill, shotgun, takes it himself. It's all run. And he gets about five or six yards. Bring up second and four. Just underway in the third quarter. We're at Stockdale High School. 18-14, Liberty leads, and as Brian so aptly noted, Stockdale was looking to get things going here in the third quarter receiving the kickoff and they fumble the ball again on the kickoff. Isaiah Hill, the quarterback, this time hands out to Stewart Jr. And he gets to about the 16 yard line. Good, strong, hard run. And you know Vance, with that run right there, he puts him right back Vance into a situation where, you know, you don't pick the third down, you know, coach will go for it on fourth down, so. Right here, a big down right here. See if the Stockdale Muskets can get some kind of penetration and see if they get a tackle for a loss, but they kind of start doing in that second uh, third, second quarter there. Oh, Stewart dodges one hit in the backfield. It looked like Nick Maiden was going to get him. He did not. He just made one sidestep and picks up 12 yards, and now it's going to be first and goal, and it was, it's as if the Liberty Patriots received the kickoff both halves. You know, Vance, you might, they, well, they did, Vance. I know. <laughs> you know. Here we go. First and goal. They're going to give it to Stewart again. And he takes it maybe for a yard. He's second and goal from maybe the four. Yeah, Vance, he just kind of just kind of creeped on that one. Really didn't run decisive on that. But he's able to pick up a yard, and that's going to make it second and goal. 
just underway here in the third quarter and Liberty knocking on the door. Second and goal from the four yard line. The quarterback is Isaiah Hill. He has a quick meeting with Sam Stewart Jr. and his tight end. They just get it off. Stewart, the lead blocker for Hill and great close by the Stockdale Mustang defense there on the left side of the defensive line. And those DBs rushed up there quickly. Once they saw it was a hill run, they were on it. You know, and Gutierrez came up, and he filled from that safety position again, man. He's done a good job all night coming up from there. Third and goal from the two. Now Hill has a back on each side of him. He's got Griffin on the right, Stewart Jr. on the left. Stewart wants to pound his way in. Touchdown, Liberty, they get in. So it didn't take long for the Patriots to capitalize on the fumbled kickoff within six plays therein. You know, Vance and they just went Hard running with Stewart, and then a couple runs right there with Hill, and that was it. And they were able to eat up that about 30 yards. They had to get to the end zone and increasing their lead, Vance. Now if they make the extra point, it'll be 25-14. Play doesn't go get off. There's some big, big linemen up there for Liberty Patriots. Number 56, Michael Bray, the junior. We've mentioned Bryson Lindsey before, number 55. He's a sophomore. Don't have a name for number, we don't have number 75 down here. I apologize to that family. Left tackle, he's doing a great job. So here's the PAT. Perfect snap, perfect hold. This one is up and this one is good. So now it's 25-14, an 11-point lead for the Liberty Patriots. If you're just getting with us, we're in the third quarter. Just started the third quarter. And Liberty kicked off to Stockdale. It was dropped at about the 25-yard line. Liberty capitalized, gets another touchdown. We've seen it all tonight. There's been some long run plays, some long pass plays, some special teams plays, some mistakes on both sides of the football that have led to scores. So it's been an... Uh, a highlight reel <laughs> first half and the beginning of the third quarter. And we're just underway in the third quarter. I'm Vance Palm. I'm an Arvin Bear. Brian Williams, the BHS driller, and Kevin Willie, West High Vikings. So three Kern High School District products here. So happy to be bringing you live streaming sports for the Kern High School District. I don't know if you heard the interview with Stan, but, um, boy, he's very happy of – I tried to say it was his baby. And he said, no, it's your baby. And I was like, dude, take – Take, take credit where credit's due, right? I mean, if you hire guys like Adams, Palm, and Willie, you've got some guts. <laughs> There's a reason why I was in retirement for a while, man. <laughs> ah, <laughs> here we go. Short kick. On oh, the other side. Fi fair Fumble! On the oh, my gosh. It was fair caught at the 40, and this one is recovered by Stockdale, and now it's getting a little chippy up there. Hang on, guys. Hang on, fellas. Hang on. So that was a... I mean, that wasn't even, that was a sand wedge. That, that barely went about that was 15. A flop shot right yeah, there. that was that, a Phil was Mickelson. One, yeah, Phil Mickelson, Tiger Woods flop shot. You know, that's what that was. 15 man. yarder and still bobbled on the fair catch. So now it's almost as if we're going to stay in golf jargon, almost like they've got the yips now on these short kickoff receptions. So now Stockdale will take the ball. Good field position, by the way, 41 yard line. So quarterback. Back in, I had a chance to talk to him for a few minutes at halftime, asked how he was doing. Ruley said, I'm doing good. Hands off to Ortiz. Ortiz swallowed up and thrown for about a three-yard loss. So Jacob Ruley, the quarterback in the second quarter, took a big hit on a run to the far side. He was hit by two Liberty players at the same time, shook him up. But I, I went and talked to him for a minute, and he said, no, I'm doing good, sir. I'm doing fine, sir. You know, Vance, and, and I think that's how you have to play against Elijah Ortiz. You want to have four or five guys who are going to tackle him. Because one-on-one, -on -one, he's going to make you miss. I mean, he's, he's been elusive all night on those one-on-one -on -one plays. And, you know, Stockdale just hasn't really been getting anything really going in their passing game, Vance. 
He's the lone back. They give it to him. They try to get it. Flag on the play right in the middle of the pack of players. That flag flew in there. They're on the far hash over there at about the 40, trying to make things happen, Stockdale is, and not much is happening. Let's see the call. It's going to be holding. It's going to be on Stockdale, so that'll go backwards. Next week, we will be at East High School. David Fanuki and his undefeated East High Blades are going to be hosting the Ridgeview Wolfpack. We will be on the east side where the Blades host the Wolfpack. And that'll be next Friday night. Looking forward to getting over to see Coach Fanuki and his squad against Dennis Manning and his squad. What a nice game that's going to be. Under nine to go here in this third quarter. 25-14, Liberty lead, Stockdale. They throw the ball out here to Or Fumble! Oh, they're going to say incomplete. They're going to say incomplete, but there's a flag right here. Liberty. Oh, they're going to say it was a backwards pass. Oh, boy. Uh, I don't know about that one. Well, and it's over here on the Stockdale side, so Coach Shelton is going to listen intently to this discussion of the officials um, right in front of him here. I, just to the naked eye, and just to the naked eye, to my eyes standing right here, Brian, I thought it was a forward pass. I, I did, too. And so many times I, I looked as a, I'll look for the players' reactions like we saw earlier when, we, when Ortiz knew that the ball flicked him in the finger here. He took off instantly and ran back to the goal line to get it. This pass was intended out here for the receiver. And you can tell when it was dropped, he didn't think it was a backward pass either. A personal foul is called against the Patriots, and it would appear that they're going to keep that as a forward pass as well. So what, what I thought was a forward pass, they're going to say is a forward pass. One of the officials did mention that it was Liberty's ball on the recovery, though. Yes. So now they're going to go over and tell Coach Nixon, A, you don't have the ball, and B, there's a personal foul, and C, because of all of this, we've just given, not the officials, but the Stockton Mustangs now have some momentum that they had desperately lost. Yeah, you gave them. The Liberty Patriot defense right, gave right. another 15 yards. Did not mean to insinuate the yeah, refs. Yeah, when, when you had them in third and long. You know, and when I was looking at where the quarterback was, I thought the quarterback was right. about a yard beyond behind, pass, behind, behind Ortiz where the pass was thrown. So a little salt on the wound there because Liberty thought, A, we either have a fumble recovery, certainly stopped him on the play, but now it's first and 10 for the Mustangs at the Liberty 45-yard line, and they're inside Liberty territory. So Mustangs, a new breath of life here in the middle of the third quarter. Two backs back there with Ruley. Ruley, play action, fakes, wants to throw, has his man out here, and it's Ortiz. Of all guys to throw it to and have wide open, it's Ortiz. First down at the 29-yard line. I think if he'd thrown it just a hair sooner, he might have given him more time to do some damage oh yes oh boy like Stewart's down there and he's stretching like it's some a cramp issue we saw that last week Vance maybe about three oh, or four man. guys caught cramps on Garces in that epic BHS Garces game thank you dear sir So Sam Stewart Jr. is down at the 29-yard line. And looks like he's cramping up. Yep. Scores 25-14. You know, I, I think that, that personal foul was huge for Liberty Vance because you have a situation where you kind of see you got a chance to, you know, get on stock a little bit. And maybe if you can stop them right there, score again, get yourself some distance where it can make it very difficult for them to come back. But now you're giving the Stockdale Mustangs life, and they're taking advantage of it, you know. But right now. And Brian, they take advantage of it on a pass play. Yeah. You know, and, they haven't and, thrown and, the ball very much. You know, and, and they have thrown it. I'm just telling you, at some point, as the players out there, you got to know where number five is. The coaches are calling the defense. Ryan Renz, Coach Renz, uh, West High Viking, and uh, – that played at Boise State, you got to make some plays. The coach pushing defense, you got to make some plays. But you got to know, you've got to know Vance where Ortiz is. Ortiz can't be that wide open. Somebody else wants to make a play against me. 
Last week, Chris Coleman for Garces somehow ends up wide open down the left side. Same thing. High snap. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, he tries to pitch it backwards, and it was a fumble for just a second. So the snap was so bad over Ruley's head that it ended up in Gutierrez's hand, and then he tried to throw it back to his quarterback to make a pass play. So after all of that positive mojo, another bad snap, and Stockdale gets backed up again. You know, and, and you lose 10 yards, and, and when, when yards have been hard to come by for you. You know, so. Oh, man. I mean, Vance, th th that's just devastating for him because now I'm really going to key on Ortiz. Somebody else is going to have to make a play to beat me tonight offensively. Second and 22, Brian. That's what they say officially. Ruley drops back. Has good protection for a second. Now he's in trouble. Now he's looking he's for some space. Now. Get it out of pounds. There you go. There you and, go. And Ruley took another shot, though. Took a big hit from the big fella right now. And when I say the big fella, he was getting chased down out there by, well, I don't have that number either. I got a couple players I don't have numbers for. But number 76 has got to be 5'11", 280. He's all over him. And he's running. But you're right. Ruley got rid of the football. And now it's third and 22 instead of third and 52. But Vince, I like how the young man made an adjustment. First half, he made a mistake, tried to make a play. This time he scrambled, used his legs, kept himself alive, and then got rid of the ball out of bounds and gave yourself a chance here on third and long. Okay. Ortiz goes in motion. They pump fake to him. Now he steps up, look, stops, throws, has a man open, and it is broken up, incomplete. Flag on the play here, though, and I think, again, he might have gone. Did he go past the line of scrimmage or was there an illegal man downfield? It look, might have been some linemen downfield. Yeah, on let's that see one. what they say on this. Yeah. Yeah, it might have been it's some linemen. He, he took off, and, you know, the linemen are going to go down. They want to block for you, and that just happened. But great idea, great try. And Johnny Balderas does a good job of recovering after being letting the guy get way behind him. And, again, you know, you got to get rid of the ball a little earlier on that and lead your receiver so the defensive back can't come back in and make a play. Fourth down. And forever. The low punt, and it's taken at the 15-yard oh, line. I thought he said fair he, catch. He can't, he can't run that, man. <laughs> That's a great move if you get away with it. He called fair catch and then took off running. He and shouldn't have called fair catch anyway. He had a great opportunity to run that. And uh, he said... <laughs> Yeah, he, <laughs> yeah, he, he can't. That, that's, that should be a, a, a yeah, penalty. Yeah, it's got to yes. be a penalty. Yeah, he gave it to him. There you go. Got to throw we it. We saw it last week. It happened last week. Same thing. And Brian, believe it or not, it happened at the college level a few weeks ago at BC. We were down at El Camino, and a college player did it. BC launched a huge long punt deep in the El Camino player, and <laughs> and it was like it wasn't like a lit. he had his hand up there waving, waving, waving. And then he caught it and saw some real estate and took off and no dice. You know, when, you, when you're catching those punt returns, uh, you you got to have a mentality of I'm looking to run first. Not, But you see a lot today uh, when I watch a lot of these games, they're quick to fair catch the ball, not read the punt. Right. I want to read the punt. That, like you said, you saw it happening early. You called it early. It's going to have a chance to return. But he had already waved fair catch, you know, and give yourself an opportunity. It's a, it's a split decision that you've got to – work on it, it, it there's it's part instinct but it's also part repetition and practice and kind of be able to read the read the lie so to speak so here we go deep in their own territory on a first and 10 Isaiah Hill talented quarterback hands the ball off to Bice Bice has already had one big touchdown run and the big tough kid is still on his feet Man, did not go down. down he did not go down fumble and it's picked up by the big fella <laughs> I say, living right, Liberty oh, living right, right now. Man, Bice took a big hit in the thighs, but did not go down. He just looked like Walter Payton, or uh, you know, you name a big lumbering running back, Earl Campbell. He just kept going, and then on top of that, he coughs the ball up. But the big offensive lineman followed him down there and scooped it up. Yeah, that's that's great hustle right there by the offensive wow. lineman. And we don't have his number. That's 76. Yeah. We don't have his number, do we? Nope. And his family's going to say, Vance, what's your deal? First and 10 inside Stockdale territory. Hill, Hill on a keeper. 
And he goes down, gets about a five-yard gain. So the clock continues to tick right now. And I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say how fast this game's going along, all right? I'm not going to say that it's moving along pretty well. Now there we go. No, no, I said I'm not going to say it. You know, and then, here we go in advance. Isn't it funny how things can yeah. they get a huge play, stop those driving, and another ball snaps over their head, and they lose 10 yards and momentum stops, and here Liberty is moving the ball again. Offense is starting to, to get rolling. Second and six. Hill takes the snap. Oh, big hit, but he's still on his feet. Bice just does not go down. This down time now. he does, but he took a big hit in the backfield and a loss of 12 yards, 13 yards. So the Stockdale defense steps up again. To your point, Brian, if either team would have capitalized on every single mistake the other team makes here, the game would be 40 to 40. Right. And, and give credit to the defense. The defense have, have said, you know what, turnover, sudden change. Let's get out here and play and get the ball back or try something different. And they've done that. So, you know, great job right now by the defense. And, and some of it's not even a great job. It's just some – that was a great defensive play. That was awesome. Some of, some of it has been some bad offense. Third and 17. Somebody's wide open down here. There's two of them over oh, here. Go. Oh, it's <laughs> way too, little too late. Draw play. Stewart gets wrapped up at the 45-yard line. And that's going to bring up a fourth and super long. And it looks like Stockdale – has done another great job on defense of holding it. The 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 scoreboard operations for Stockto here, not in accordance with really truly what's going down on the field. So if you're a fan and you're looking at the scoreboard, you say it says third and 17. It's actually fourth and 17, and the Patriots are going to punt. So Sean Pasco, who's got a big leg, but this time he's going to punt into the wind with under five to go here in this third quarter. And that dangerous Elijah Ortiz is back there. Perfect deep snap. Here's a punt. They're gonna take a look at it and neither calls a fair catch or anything. And it bounces between a couple of dancing Mustangs and it goes down at the 25 yard line. Once again, we wanna thank the Kern High School District, Brian Schaefer, the superintendent, Brenda Lewis, the assistant superintendent of instruction, Dean McGee, the Assistant Superintendent of Educational Services and Innovative Programs, and our halftime interview, our guest, and our good friend and the Director of School Support Services, Stan Green. Let's not forget Stan Green, responsible for, quote-unquote, the play. Fourth and long, 1988 BC Potato Bowl. He connects for a long first down. They go on to win it and probably one of the greatest renegade games in the top five possibly in the history of Bakersfield College Renegades and Stan Green, the quarterback that took the risk, made the pass, and there were T-shirts made of it. I was there, watched it live. Incredible. What a, what a play, what a pass, what a game. So and thank you, Stan. Yep, I was there the night before we beat West High. So you had prepped the field with some winning mojo. Well, it would have been winning mojo for me either way as the Bakersfield team is going to win either that Either way, night. the Thrillers <laughs> or the Gades, right. Or the Vikings, but unfortunately. Oh, sorry, the Vikings. Yep. Sorry about that, Kevin. <laughs> Second and three. Maiden, strong run, but maybe only gets a yard. That's going to bring up third and a long two. <laughs> third and one. Kevin off mic said, we want our fair share too there, B. I know they have. But it's like when people tell me about UCLA, it only counts for the ones I, only count the ones I played in. There you go. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. No, they all count. They all count. They all count. Okay. But it's manageable right here, Vance, because now, you know, you got everybody in play now. Third and inches. Ruley, the handoff, big, strong run by Maiden, and he just lowered his head and said, I need a foot, and I'm getting it. So a big, strong run there. And let's not forget that young man, Robert Maiden, had a big play in the first half. I was talking to Stan Green. I said, well, did you see that play that happened right down there, five yard, right in front of him? He goes, you know what? I turned away for one second, and I heard the crowd yelling behind me, and I see a defensive lineman for the Stockton Mustangs stand on the end zone. And that's about how fast it was, too, about a second, man. Just stripped the... And then he had the interception on the two-point conversion, that, and he's had some big plays. He's had a bit... Uh-oh, are you, so, do I hear Tony's Pizza? Do I hear player of the game? Here we go. Here's the handoff. Gutierrez, nice strong run. Gets up to the 46-yard line. Boy, that looked good. You know, I, and again, I, Gutierrez has had a strong game tonight, too, Vance, on defense. And 
He's had a couple good runs like that. Probably his best run of the night right there. But he's, a, again, he again is a shifty when they run. They're running the angles and they're moving their bodies and they're harder tackle one-on-one. -on -one. Two and a half left here in the third quarter. It is second and four. Ruley, the handoff. Ortiz gets tripped up at the line of scrimmage and he tried to hop over Sam Stewart Jr. and Stewart got him. You know, fans on that one, I mean, Ooh. again, they, Talking about dodging the bullet, Liberty was that close. Yeah. Had he not tripped over the, the, the lineman in the middle, I think that's another big gain right there for Ortiz. So now it's third and one. Two minutes to go here in this third quarter. Jacob Ruley, the quarterback, stands in the shotgun. They come at him. It's a high snap. And I'll tell you what, Ruley has to go down with it. So this high snap situation for the Mustang is really, really causing problems. It was third and inches. All they needed to do was get a handoff. Vance, when you called it earlier, you said, hey, that's about the six or seven high snap. We've seen two costly ones on the last two drives, the one that went over the head that caused that 10-yard loss. And right there, like I said, third and inches. You guys in good uh, position, and it throws that timing off. He couldn't even handle, really couldn't handle the ball off, and there was nowhere to run. Ooh, ouch. Now all of a sudden, they're in a tough spot here. They're at the 44-yard line, and it's fourth and four. And 114 to go here in this third quarter. It's a huge, huge play in the football game right here. Really, another oh, high snap. Will it be a pitch? He's in trouble now. He can't pass. If he gets to the side, oh, he can't make no it. No way. Big time play by the Liberty Patriots, and that's Brock Anderson, the junior. Stayed with it, ran him down, and the simple things of these shotgun snaps have cost the Stockdale Mustangs dearly. Yes, I mean, Vance, right there, again, it throws the timing off to get what you, get your pitch out. Everybody's out of position. Because that puts your pitch relationship out of position. Your running back was a little too far ahead of your quarterback, and there was nothing to do. And, you know, really tried to make a play, but there was nothing there. But, again, the defense really, Vance, has done a pretty good job, you know, considering how many times they've been on defense and how many opportunities Liberty really has had to try to put some points on the board. Can they once again make some big plays and force a punt? Well, it's going to have to happen now, Brian. 102 left in this third quarter. Liberty up 25 14. Hill, the quarterback, takes the snap, wants to throw, goes down the near side right away, and it's touchdown. a touchdown. Were they inbounds? Did they step out of bounds? Never caught them out of bounds. Touchdown, touchdown, Liberty. No flags. Clean play. They strike instantly. Johnny Balderas with the touchdown. They wasted no time, Brian. No, you know, and, and again, you know, Nixon is one of those guys, man, when he, when he sees an opportunity, he wants to strike. I like that. You have a short field. You've been running the ball. You know, you got one-on-one -on -one coverage. And what I like is how he'll threw the ball in front and let the receiver go get it. Very close to the sidelines within millimeters of being out of bounds. Here's the PAT. One, two, three, and it's good. Well, Vance, I already put it up, so I messed it up. About 55 seconds, Vance, to go in this uh, third quarter, and you know the Stockdale Mustangs are, are, are starting to lose touch in this game as Liberty's putting some distance in between them, and we haven't seen a, a quick strike ability by the Stockdale Mustangs to really score rapidly except for when they got that uh, defensive play. But offensively, we haven't seen them be able to really just hit, hit, hit. 32-14 the score. Now it's an 18-point differential. And, you know, two minutes ago, Stockdale was, you know, moving the ball. They had a third and in inches. If they get that first down, they continue to move down the field. They've got the weapons. They have the talent and the skill. But some... Minor points of execution have cost them dearly, and now they're going to have to really work some magic here to make something happen here in this fourth quarter. 54 seconds left in the third. 32-14. Liberty leads by 18. I'm Vance. I've got Brian to my right, Kevin to my left. There's some special guests with, with us up here tonight. One beautiful little girl and 
One semi-handsome boy. Let's see here. All right, an eight iron at least. It's taken at the 14 yard line. Nice job by Liberty to come in there and clean things up. Good hustle out there by Ogden Bass. Good tackle and Cameron Meek got in there to make that tackle as well. So it'll be first and 10 for Liberty. Next week, Ryan, we are Ridgeview at East High School. Coach Fanuki, the rebirth of East High Foothill is gonna welcome in a Ridgeview football team that's taken their lumps this year. That's gonna be an interesting, interesting football game. It, you know, that, that really will be a good, uh, interesting in terms of a team on the rise, you know, each week people keep, are they that good? They keep winning. Yep. You know, and then Ridgeview, a team that came with all this promise this year and just seem, they just can't seem to put together consistently to be that team like they were last year. Had some injuries, had some other issues, had some tough losses. This Stockdale team beat them week zero. You know, you, you talk about, you know, injuries. Vance, you know, with Stockdale, they lost probably their best cover corner in a Darian Rao, number 11. He had a ACL surgery, and now because of that, Elijah, who's normally your safety, is playing in the corner. That's the end of the third quarter. 32-14, we'll step off the mic for just a second. One thing about Kern Schools is you get to do your banking your way. I'm a traditional banker. I still like writing checks and visiting my branch. I'm a millennial, and for me, it's all about the mobile. And I'm somewhere in between. I still do my banking online and at the ATM. And with access to over 30,000 surcharge-free ATMs nationwide, Kern Schools is always close by. So no matter how you do your banking, Kern Schools is always there. That's why we're the number one financial institution in all of Kern County. Kern Schools, together we have something special. All right, everybody, here we go. Start of the fourth quarter. Third and three for Stockdale to get set to fourth quarter play. Stockdale trails by 18. Third and a long three to start off the fourth quarter. They're going to give it to Ortiz. Ortiz tries to battle. He gets some room. Ortiz to the 40. Can Ortiz do it? Can he make it all the way? Ortiz down to the 30, down to the 20, gets brought down. Pasco makes the stop, but that was a much, much needed run by the Stockdale Mustangs. And Elisha Ortiz never ceases to amaze me. That play looked dead on impact at the offensive line of scrimmage and shoots out to the near side. Off he goes. Vince, again, he does a great job of dipping in and bouncing out and hitting that sideline and turn on the Jets. And Right there, he picks up another big, big play. What a beautiful play. He stretched it out, stayed behind the line of scrimmage, no offensive lineman downfield, and at the very last minute, he tossed it out there to a stretching Austin Gutierrez. Look at that. I mean, here, Vance, here they come. Really done a great job of keeping plays alive with his legs. I mean, he's, he's, he's making sure he's staying... Uh, mobile and he keeps he keeps his options op open and right right there what a nice touch pass reading the route throwing it only his receiver can get it in between two defenders that's just a great play by Ruley and a great catch by Gutierrez okay takes a snap Ortiz looking to get into the end zone what a strong run boy they've got a new little life left in him here 11-11 left in the fourth they make a wish 
this is a good answer back right sure here. Sure is, by, by this offense right here. Sure is. Because they really have not got anything going consistently, and here they are on a drive. This is really the first drive. And they're knocking on the door right now to put some points on the board, man. 10.48 and counting here in the fourth quarter. Ruley. And they put the ball in Ortiz's hands, but he was quickly stopped out there. That's Griffin out there. And Sam Stewart Jr. got in there as well. And now it brings up third and goal. And Vance, they, I mean, they got to be a situation now. They're third, yep. fourth. They, yep. they got two downs to score. Third and goal from the seven. Steven Rennick. Breaks way out to the right side. Ortiz, the lone back that stands behind Ruley. Ruley looks like he wants to throw. Ruley looking for a gap. Ruley cuts back to this side. Can he get some blocks? Ruley's in trouble now. He gets brought down out there. Another big tackle. And you know, and, and Vance again, Josh Robertson with the tackle. He's trying to make some plays happen, and, and right there is just nothing open. And good coverage by the secondary of Liberty. That's the situation there. Oof. You know, you thought he had a chance to run. They just closed up the gaps, and there's just nowhere to go. 9.26 and counting. The clock's still rolling here in the fourth quarter. So now fourth and goal, but now it's back to the 10-yard line. Ruley. How's Gutierrez back there with him? Ruley's really, got to put this ball up. Floats it, Touchdown. and he has a man wide open. And inexplicably enough, it's Elisha Ortiz standing by himself in the end zone. Touchdown. I mean, Vance, again, I don't know how he's wide open. I, I have no idea how he's wide open. So hand it to Ruley, hand it to the Stockdale offense for the stick two of this and persistence. And really looked like he was in trouble again. He threw it out and he floated it out there, actually. That wasn't a, that wasn't a dart, Brian. He kind of floated that out there. And it falls into the hands of Elisha Ortiz, their superstar senior. And so now they'll go for two. Ruley on a keeper. He's in trouble. Now he's got a, it's going to be a foot race he to the end zone. He gets a block. Can he, he get block. in? He got it. He got it. Look at the effort by Jacob Ruley. <laughs> he ran all the way to the, to the fence. He just kept going. That was sheer effort there. He came to the near side, had to turn back around a la Marcus Allen. And then he was a dead sprint to the pylon, and he got it. So for a, for a young man that took a big shot in the second quarter and had to come out, he sure rallied his team back. And now it's 32-22. What a game. And Vance, you know, that was huge. Those, that, those two points. Put you in a 10-point game if you can get the ball, score a touchdown or a three, get the ball again. Depending on what you got the first. If you, if you kick a field goal, you got to score seven. If you score seven, you're down three, you can tie the game up. They've got but, options now. But the defense has to get some stops now. They cannot allow Liberty to score any more points. Well, with 9.06, Coach Nixon's mindset is let's get that clock going. <laughs> And let's let it roll as fast as it can and get some first downs. And uh, what a ball game. Fourth quarter action here. Kern High School District's live streaming football. Again, our thanks to the Kern High School District, PAV Solar and Communications, Kern Schools Federal Credit Union, Premier Lighting, and Tony's Pizza. Tony's Pizza player of the game. Still up for grabs, that's for sure. Here's the kick. How deep will it go? Taken at the 10 yard line, and that's Vice. And he's a dangerous, dangerous back, and he is strong. Oh boy. Oh boy. Him, oh boy. He him. Oh he boy. Him, oh, they said he went out of bounds at about the 18, 19 yard line. They say he's out of bounds at the 19, so the Liberty fans don't know it yet, but they're going to find out. With the Boo Birds, they say he stepped out of bounds. The official right on it. And Vance, what I like about everybody else has wide receiver, linebacker, tight end. What's Bryce listed as? Athlete. And yeah. And, and, he, and he just, and that's what he's doing. He's just making plays. 
for Liberty. I mean, every time they need a big play, he's the one that scored on, on that <laughs> touchdown run. Right there, momentum's coming back to Stockdale. He's like, no, no, let me just bust up here through the middle. And you can say he wanted the ball. You know, when that ball's in there, he made sure he no was going to get catch. the ball. Yeah, it was no fair catch, and no up man was going to get it. He'll hands the ball up to Stewart. Stewart runs into his own man for a second. The Mustangs jump on him for a second, but that's a good six-yard gain to start this drive. But right now, all the momentum in Liberty's favor. He took that ball at the 20-yard line and was knocked out of bounds at the 20-yard line and was only touched, only touched when he got when he was greeted by his teammates in the end zone for what he thought was a presumed touchdown, but he had just tiptoed down the sidelines and went out of bounds at about the 19. With 8-17 and counting. Two backs, one on each side of Hill. He's in the shotgun. He takes a snap at the 20. Stewart, fumble! He picked it back up. You talk about living right. The ball was knocked out of his hands, took one bounce, and it came right back up in his hand like a yo-yo. Oh, you know, man. And that's the play the Stockdale Mustang defense and offense needed. They recover that or pick it up and go for six. I mean, that's, Well, we've seen everything else in that, Brian. Why not? I mean, you know, again, the, the, the ball security in this game has not, has not been You're the right. best. You're right. And, you know, you go into week nine of high school football, and you expect to see that in week zero, week one. But it's been a topsy-turvy football game tonight. So here we go. Stockdale's got to be happy that they even have him in a third down situation. Third and six. And a timeout is going to be called, and this timeout is going to be called by Liberty High School. Yeah. So with 7.26 to go in this fourth quarter, 32-22. Liberty leads by 10. They've got a third and six right now on the 15-yard line. It's been a fantastic football game. A back-and-forth seesaw battle all night long. Big plays in the air, big plays on the ground. Special teams play. Turnovers. Turnovers converted to touchdowns. It's been a really, really fun football game to call. My name's Vance Palm. Brian Adams is to my right. Kevin Willie's to my left. I'll tell you, we have a lot of candidates this, this, tonight. Hey. I mean, we might have just flip a, flip a coin here tonight. I mean, you call a name, flip a coin. I mean, it's, it's, there's so many guys that have played but nobody's really like separated themselves like we've seen in like, a couple games I've done with you guys so far this year. Kevin Willie has 33% of the decision for Tony's Pizza Player of the Game. I have 33%, and thank goodness the street cred of Brian Adams warrants the 34% and all the pressures on his shoulder. Again, Brian, the black hole just shaking the entire stands below us, man. They want to see a big stop here. On a third and six. Will this be two down territory for the Patriots? You know, I, I think from this range you can get a. Hill floats one out here, throws it out, and it Touchdown. is a flag. He caught it. He's going to put up six. Touchdown. Touchdown. But a flag down here at the line of scrimmage. Don't know what this call is. A flag at the line of scrimmage. They're going to say an ineligible field, man back. downfield for the Patriots. And Liberty can't believe it. I mean, I love that throw by the young man, Hill. And I love the way Balderas went up and snatched the ball. But it's all for nothing, Vance. It's going to come back. And they're going to replay third down. And here they go with that chant. You can't do that. But you know what's important is the clock stopped on that. So well, Curtis Brown, the Liberty Patriot that's out for the rest of the season, <laughs> over there voicing his displeasure with the call. They're going to go to the air again, third and 11. Hill throws across Wide the middle. Open. Oh, goodness, what a beautiful pass. And that was a dart, and it went through the hands of Grant Vice, of all people, the guy that has put so much into this 32 point score right now. It went right through his fingertips at the goal line. So here comes. And that's the one you know, Bison had a great game. He would like to have have back. Woo, boy. Well, here, here's here's your PA, I mean, here's your field goal attempt, Vance. And we're talking about what, 36, 37 yards. Here's the snap, the hold. It is certainly long enough. It's no good. It's wide left. 
It's Defense wide hold. left, so Josh Robertson has a big leg, and with the wind behind him, he almost hit that to white lane. But well, wide left, Stockdale holds, Brian. He only needed that to get to the black tarp or the black <laughs> runway on the pole, on the long jump. Wow. There, man. <laughs> and through the middle, that's what he wanted. But uh, Stockdale defense gets a break. Instead of getting six points put on, an eligible, receive, an eligible person, a man downfield, moves back. Touchdown missed. And, and they're in business, and their offense moved well that last series. Brian, so I'll tell you what, do. boy, when Hill does that bootleg to the left, he planted and threw that dart. That was a strong pass. Now we have some some confusion here by the Mustangs. They've got players running on late. We think we have everybody set. There's the snap, and it's going to be a play, a run to the near side. Look at this. Oh, my goodness. And Elisha Ortiz almost broke another one. He picked up 12 on that first down play. Woo, boy. And we are at the seven-minute mark here in the fourth quarter. Liberty leads by 10. But if you've watched this thing from the beginning to this very moment right here on kernhide.org, you'll agree with me when I say it's still anybody's ball game. Oh, yeah, Vance. I mean, they needed a stop. They got it. First and 10. Ortiz again. And he actually just ran right up the back of Harrison Taylor, his teammate, and he picked up nine yards again. So, man, oh, man, Elisha Ortiz running with a purpose. Oh, he did get the 10 yards. So, two 22 yards and two carries. And with six and a half to go here in the fourth quarter, the play gets called in. Jalen Smith brings it over to Jacob Ruley. And they're at the 45 yard line, 625 and counting. Here come the Mustangs. Ruley takes the snap. He has Ortiz out to the right if he needs it. Ruley throws back across the grain. And it's caught out there to Jalen Smith. Not a big gain. Not a big gain. He rolled might, to his might, right, threw back might, to his might left. Might be a loss of a yard, man. Maybe. You're right, Brian. Second and 11. And it looks as though Harrison Taylor, their valuable tight end linebacker DL, he's coming out with his, he's holding his hand, number 33, just for a second, so. He comes out, three receivers down to the right side, over to the right side, I should say, the big part of the field. Ruley drops back. Ruley rolls to his right, has room. The linemen stay where they're at. They've learned to stay where they're at now, and Ruley throws it down to the ground. And that'll bring up third and 11. <laughs> I was watching those linemen. <laughs> they're, start, they're standing right around the line of scrimmage, yeah, yeah. and they start to go down, then they come back, and they say, oh, that's right, Jake from run and pass. Let's see what these refs call well, here. There's a receiver. I mean, it's right at the feet of the receiver, uh, of Ortiz. Ortiz is right by there. Right, right. They're going to say nothing. And they did a good job. That's the way to communicate. I like that they got together, communicated, and, and then came up with the right call. Liberty crowd didn't like it. Now third and 11. Ruley takes the snap. Has good protection. Will he put this ball in the air? He wants him to go long. Now he's got to get rid of it. Throws over to Ortiz, and Ortiz drops it. So... Incomplete pass, took a big hit afterwards, so he was swallowed up out there by Brock Anderson. Now it's fourth and 12, fourth and 11, and obviously they have to go for it. You know, and Vance, I'm, I'm, I was watching the receivers that time. We, they got to run. I mean, yeah. I mean it, it looked like those guys weren't even really giving an all-out effort. You never know when the ball's coming your way, but you have to run. You have to go to your best effort, because that time they kind of just jogged out to the spots. And really didn't really go for him. He wanted the guy come across the middle. I couldn't see what, couldn't see the actual number to bust, you know, so he can get you the ball. But now he said, Vance, this is it, 527. Fourth down, they got to get a first down on this one. Fourth and 11. Ruley now has Ortiz in the backfield with him. This is a do or die must situation. Ruley's got to throw this football. He's got to get rid of it. He's flushed out of the pocket again. Can he buy some time? Now Ruley's got to get there. He tries to. He got a good block. Oh. He tries to deke him in. He doesn't get it. He falls short. He was trying to kind of lure him to stay in the defensive backfield to create some space, but he couldn't do it. And he got brought down just shy of that first down marker. And now he's holding his wrists as well. So Ruley got banged up in his hand. Looked like he's holding his left hand. So he's coming off injured. He's a tough kid, man. I mean, he's taking hurt, some hits. Hurt, I should say. And, and he takes a tick. Licking and keeps on ticking, oh, man. So he's been doing it all night. So now, 5-14 remains here in this fourth quarter. 
And I thought he had a block pass. Had he went outside yeah. and tried to, like he scored a two-point conversion, hits that sideline, I think he has a chance to pick that first down up. He did not get it. Liberty comes out now with 5.14 to go here in this fourth quarter. They lead by 10. Vance, right now you got to get a three and out here. If you're Stockdale. Hill. Stewart busts through, and he gets 11 yards. Wow. Strong, hard run for Sam Stewart. And I like that time. He made sure he secured the ball on that one, Vance. I mean, he goes two hands over the ball. He tucks it nice and tight. I'm sure that coaching staff was telling him exactly that before that series started, Brian. He didn't, he didn't fight for those few yards. That time he, he saw it, and he just kind of just dropped down when he, once he had some contact and picked up the first down. Under five to go here. Isaiah Hills had a nice game tonight. It's QB. They go to Stewart again. He gets stopped at the line of scrimmage, and he gets brought down. About the line of scrimmage doesn't get much, but that clock continues to tick. Stockdale has three timeouts. They trail by 10, and the first one is called right there. So Coach Shelton calls his team over. Once again, hope you're enjoying these live streaming sport events. As Stan mentioned in the halftime interview, we're going to be doing some volleyball next week. We'll let you know. Be ready. That decision of what game has not been made yet, but I can tell you this, Brian, and you know it firsthand, the, the volleyball world very well. At this time right now in this city, we have exceptional volleyball talent at all levels, and I know anybody that knows my life thinks I'm setting it up because I've got kids playing it. Yeah, I can tell you this, because I have kids playing it, I'm watching these games, and I'm traveling around this city watching this, knowing that our high school district is going to start you know, calling these games, and it's just an immense amount of talent in this city in volleyball. So we'll be starting it next week. Get ready. Well, you know, not, not that, that, that for years. Go ahead, buddy. But, uh, thing. Here we go. Second and ten for the Patriots. Hill on a keeper. He's getting chased to the sidelines. I don't think he'll go out of bounds, will he? He's going to stay in bounds, and he goes down. Gain of about four. And we've got a Patriot down over here right below us to the near side, and he's having a hard time getting up. And looks like it's big number 60, and that would be Wesley Underwood, the junior center. He's on. No, he's going to stay down for a second. He was going to get up just for a second, but now he's staying down. Looks like he's pulling his left leg. Once again, give me an opportunity just to say our sincere thanks. Ramon Hendricks, the principal at Stockdale High School, thank you again for this great welcome. Appreciate it. Libby Allen, the principal at Liberty High School, two great, great pillars of our educational community here in Kern County. And, of course, the Kern High School District, thank you for getting this off the ground. A lot of fun, a lot of buzz right now. With zero advertising, the word is spread like wildfire. And wildfire, we get a ton of support, a lot of people watching. Pav Solar and Communications, they heard about this and said, we're in. How about the Kern Schools Federal Credit Union, an institution here locally synonymous with supporting our high school and college students here in the community. And Premier Lighting, thank you, Premier Lighting. And of course, Tony's Pizza. And the applause you hear is for the aforementioned Wesley Underwood. He's up and kind of just walking off a little slowly. Tony's Pizza, player of the game. B, Kevin, that discussion is going to have to start taking place here pretty soon with 4.13 left here in this fourth quarter. Liberty up by 10. It warrants at least some discussion points on our Tony's Pizza, player of the game. Hold on, let's get your mic going talk here. About, there, you go. uh, there we go. You got to talk about Elijah Ortiz. I mean, he's had a big game offensively and defensively. Stripped the guy. Um, Robert Nick Maiden, he's had a big game. Here we go. Here's a big play right here. Here's third and five. 
It's a run play to Stewart. Stewart's not going to get it, so that's fourth down. That brings up the question that I asked. You know, it's a fourth down territory for Coach Mixon as well. Coach Shelton burns a timeout, so keep going with your Tony's Pizza talk. You know, so I, I, th I think those two have been the, the uh, two big players that I've seen separate themselves for, for Stockdale. I think with Liberty, it's kind of hard because they've had three or four players that have really good games. Uh, nobody, uh, uh, I would say, a, a super great game, but I think Vice, uh, his touchdown run, and that big Kevin, we've got to work on his mic, that's for sure. Something's going down with Brian's mic. Just sit tight with us. What do you think, Kay? Well, I, as you say, I'm having a hard time hearing Brian, but I, I Ortiz obviously has had a great game. And I, I think uh, on the Liberty side, you got to look at Bice and Stewart. Yeah, I think you're, you're, you're so, both of you are right. Sam Stewart Jr. has had a big game. Grant Bice right now, I think if you were to go by the eyeball test, on who's had a huge impact on this game. I think Bice is in for the running. Four minutes to go. I think, uh, and forgive me for not knowing his name, is Stockdale's quarterback. Uh, Ruley. Yeah, Jacob he, Ruley takes some big hits. He's, well, not only the hits, but he's had a lot to deal with with the centers. High, high yes. snaps, I yes. saw some low snaps. Um, guys dropping ball, so he's he's been playing, he's been hanging in there too. But This story not over yet. And now Coach Nixon calls a timeout. So now a little chess match going on. So Liberty. Kevin's talking Isaiah Hill, quarterback, uh, Grant Bice. He's also talking Sam Stewart, Jr., the running back for Liberty. Brian and Kevin have both talked about Elisha Ortiz uh, for Stockdale. Um, you haven't really mentioned any player that, that, I wouldn't, that I wouldn't consider myself. It'd be nice to have a defensive player, too, because the, the both defensive have been really doing really good. Both ways, and, and uh, Stewart Jr., remember, he made the big interception on that ball that was bad advance that we talked about that gave Bice the opportunity to right score that here. touchdown. Yep. Yeah. You know, he's also scored on offense, so he's had a really good game on both sides of the ball. And he's a junior. Grant Bice is a senior. But this game's not over. Four minutes to go here, and here's a big fourth and five. If Liberty does not convert, Stockdale offense is going to come right back on the field. Somebody's going to have to make a good play so we can make a decision. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what we haven't seen is a quarterback draw design where he drops back, he's going to pass and takes up the middle. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if you see that kind of play right now. Okay, fourth and five. Play of the game here for a lot of reasons. Hill, behind center. They go for a hard count. Nobody jumps. Good job there by the Stockdale line. And Coach Nixon obviously trying to get him to jump. They do not jump. So nice job. They, there was movement by Stockdale, but they did not hop over that line. So big play. And the Liberty Patriots burn their last time out. They lead by 10, 32-22. You know, and that was great, great discipline by Brian Abbott. He wanted to go. But he just held in there and he watched the ball and didn't go. And now, you know, Liberty's probably going to come back out now and punt the ball. That's what I'm thinking they're going to do anyway. Let's put the ball. They haven't driven the ball on your 80 yards. Make them drive 80 in four minutes. And, and try to, if they score, they got to get an onside kick and then they got to try to score again. You know, but I would punt the ball away and, and let my defense pick up and, and make, make Stockdale beat you in the air. I agree. And I would imagine weighing out the options that that's what Coach Nixon's going to do. I do see Sean Pasco coming out, and looks like that's what's going to happen. Punt. Nobody back for the Mustangs. Oh, and it's not the best punt. Gets a decent bounce for Liberty, but it goes out the 20-yard line. That could have been a lot worse for Stockdale. Not the best punt. Wobbled a little bit and goes out at the 20. So here come the Mustangs. Vance, years ago I was doing a BC game. I don't know if you're with me on this one. When the kid kicked the ball, I can't remember what team it was from, uh, visiting BC. Kicks the ball up. It was a negative 13-yard. Went backwards. Because ba it hit. It went down about 10 yards, and it spun back and started rolling. It was a negative 13-yard punt. 
Uh, not, a, not a stat you want. Okay, here we go. 353. Mustangs have to score twice. Touchdown and a field goal. Ruley got to put this ball in the air. He runs again to the right again. Throws, and this is caught. Oh, what a catch. What a catch. That's a Brian Adams catch right there. And that's, that's, you know, that's Craig Greta was right there. Great job on the sideline, working the sideline and, and securing the ball and keeping it bound. Man, oh, man. Ruley runs to the right and a tiptoe catch on the sideline and the grab. First down, Stockdale. You know, advance and everything gets out of bounds. Clock stops. We apologize for Brian's mic. It's something deeply internal and soulful. We'll get to it. If we could fix it with a couple of flicks of a finger, we'd do it. All right. Ruley, short shotgun, takes the snap, drops back. And the Liberty DB is not giving him much. Now Ruley stops and throws, throws into the wind, and flag. It was intended out there for Elijah Ortiz, and the call is going to be on the DB. And it's going to be personal interference. But you know, I mean, the, the thing about high school and college, it's only a 15-yard penalty. Yeah, yep. It's not a spot foul like you have in the NFL. You know, NFL, that's going to be on the 28-yard line. Here, it moves 15 yards, reset your defense. But Stockdale will take it. <laughs> oh, they, they, well, you want to take every yard you right, can get, especially right. with the clock not moving. <laughs> exactly. 334 to Brian Point. To Brian's point, three and a half left here. And Stockdale needs to get into the end zone quickly, and then they need an onside kick. So, tall order for the Mustangs. 334 left in the fourth quarter. A total of 54 points scored so far. Been a fun, entertaining game to call. Mid-October. Dodgers Cubs coming up soon. Woo! And the Cleveland Indians uh, got a 2-0 win tonight. Really? really drops back. It takes him a long time to throw that football. And this time it's underthrown. So he really takes a long time to yeah, throw the football. He surveys the land. Yeah, long time went off the clock there on a first down. So now it's second and 10. I'd like to kind of see maybe a quick little strike here and there on a first down. Keep those, keep that momentum going. You know, if it's, sometimes you can get a good five, seven yard hit, just hitting it out or out to the sideline and getting out of bounds. Here we go, second and 10, 325. Ruley takes the snap, looks, throws an inside slant out here to Smith. Smith trying to make something happen. And Smith, and they, got they, a, they got a 15 more yards. They got him man. on a face mask. Oh, goodness, got him right at the tip there. And, and that's, if you're Liberty, that's so bad for you because now if instead of the clock rolling, now it's going to stop the clock, move 15 yards, and giving the Stockdale Mustangs life. Wow. I only called five yards on that one. But yeah, I, it wasn't, it they, wasn't they, one of those malicious ones, but. So that brings it to a second and one. All right. But the clock stops, and now you got a short one. Okay, here we go. 3.17 to go here in this fourth quarter. Ruley takes the snap. They're right below us. Throws, and those receiver slipped. It was intended out there for Gradowitz, and he lost his footing. So, clock stops quickly. But even with it, he would have to slip that ball way behind yep, the receiver. Yep, fans. That, yep. that, and they need only one. They've got to get. See, that's going to be open again. They're going to give you that yep, again. Yep, yep, yep. The ball is at the 44-yard line of Liberty, so they need to go 44 yards to get into the end zone here. Second and one. Three twelve to go here in this fourth quarter. Ruley stands at midfield on the shotgun. They're standing right below us. There's the snap. They want to get this first down. Ortiz gets the first down. 
Now they'll move the chains. And that short third and one brought us fireworks. So somebody was stoked about that third and one call. <laughs> Ruley drops back, throws out here to the near side, and they're going to say catch. catch. Oh, wow. But, no, they're going to say incomplete, overruled. Oh, the official ran down the sidelines and overruled it, said the ball hit the ground. That was a flag on the A flag down at the 35-yard line, and it looks like Mustangs are walking backwards, of course, so that's... And they're gonna say illegal man downfield on this, and that, that was not a long route or a real progressive type of a play to have an illegal man downfield. So yeah, we have. Under three to go here. Ruley in trouble. He's got to get rid of it. He might lose the football on this if he's not careful. Here you go, Brian. Vance, you called it. The ball came out. Yeah, he, he just, and he's hurt too, but, you know, he just, he went into a, a real heavy area of guys and tried to get out of it. He coughed it up. Liberty football. And Ruley's just in a lot of pain, and he's he's been banged up quite a bit tonight. So he's going to go off, and he got sandwiched and squished, and the ball popped out. So it's Liberty football with 2.49 to go. 32-22, Liberty leads. You know, Vance, he was trying to throw the ball, trying to throw the ball right there to Ortiz, and, and the Liberty Patriot defense collapsed and got a big turnover. And Vance, that's going to be it right, th right there. You think it is. Now they don't have enough guys out there, so Liberty's trying to do it with 10. That's all right. We can take a penalty and move five yards back. Well, that's a good thing if you don't have your name for number 75. <laughs> oh, low snap. Hill's got to pick it up. And go down. He needs to slide down now. Just go down. Oh, he go. goes down at the 40 yard line. Stood up for a second or two, so bad snap. So that's enough to make the Liberty fans going to go. <gasps> well, as the clock continues to tick here, and Coach Shelton has one more time out. And that was a loss of yardage, so that doesn't bode well for Liberty. Second and 12. Brian, you talked about all these key injuries to key players. Liberty's able to maybe get a win here without Curtis Brown, one of their big stars. Fumble, almost, oh boy. So Hill has a bad exchange with Max Shores. I shouldn't have seen a fumble. The ball was bobbled on the handoff to Shores. Not a fumble, but a real bad exchange there. And look at this, it's third and 13 here. Well, he kind of got tripped up trying to get back to hand the ball off. But I like what Coach Nixon's done is get under the center because they've had some shaky snaps as well for themselves tonight. Ball's hitting the ground. So the, 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 the long snap game has not been on point tonight. Or the short snap game. You know, I know what you're saying. Here we go, 127. Isaiah Hill. Bad snap again, fumble! Now Hill's gotta go down on it, oh goodness. So now, with 114, and now Coach Shelton's gonna call a timeout, so goodness, Brian, what has been going on tonight with these snaps? That was right in Hill's hand. Well, well, that, well yeah, but you don't want a bullet when a guy's three yards back. <laughs> I, mean, I don't want a bullet ever. You know, I mean, you, you, want, a, you want a catchable snap. Right. You know, you, you zing it that hard, it hits his helmet, they got lucky that they were able to recover it because can you Stop, imagine Stop a scoop and score? And sc scoops oh. it and score, like you say, Vance. They're right now, they can go onside kick, and they only have to kick a field goal to tie you up. But with the minute 14 now, you punt, uh, you're going to punt the ball here. I mean, you know, and you had just mentioned how smart you thought it was that Coach Nixon was going to have them come, you know, get behind center, and they don't. So now it's, you know, this game's not over. It's close, but it's not over. 1.14 to go here in this fourth quarter. Well, unless they block a punt. Right. You well, know, this will be all she wrote. So Pasco's going to come out here to punt it. And 
Elisha Ortiz is going to come back to his own 45, 40 maybe, right around there. I, I, I wouldn't go too far back. I, I, make, I make him boom one on me. Now Liberty doesn't have enough guys on here. They're running guys off and on, and Coach Nixon can't be happy about this. They're going to try to block it. They come at it. They don't get it. And, and he goes for a fair catch, so he catches it about the 34-yard line. So... And, and that's the right play, Vance, because time is, is not your ally right now, right? right? You don't want to try to catch it and make it around and you, and you waste 10, 15 seconds. Basically, you went for the block punt, you didn't get it, you fair catch it. Now you can see if you can score quick, because you have to score really quick now to have a chance. That's the voice of Brian Adams, my longtime partner. I've been able to pull him out of retirement for a few games, and it's been a blast. 108. Remains here in this fourth quarter. Stockdale needs a heavy dose of magic here. Smith, the now it's Smith, the quarterback, and he almost finished the game right there. And Zach Griffin, <laughs> that's his second pick opportunity that's drifted out of his hands. And uh, He said, I think, Vance, I don't catch him, I tackle him. Right, I, right, that's what, right. I, that's what I do. I rip the balls out of him and tackle him. Right, man. and I'll tell you what, his teammates. He's had a good defensive game. He sure has. So we're going to have to make a decision here soon, real soon. Smith, the quarterback, he drops back. They're looking for him to launch one. He fires one to the right side, and it's dropped, and it's dropped. And it was intended to for Gutierrez, but he dropped it, so He's now it's third down. Too. Well, Vance, I'll tell you this. Young Mr. Smith. Has a strong arm. Sure does. You, you, you can see why he's a, a, a big time baseball prospect. The court, the junior quarterback and baseball phenom, Jalen Smith. And his dad was a longtime basketball coach at West High. Will. I talked to Will the other night. Said, "Hey man, I want you to call a couple basketball games. You want to do it with me?" No. I said, "All right, I'm going to rough you up a little bit <laughs> and get you out here to call." Smith. Smith rolls to the right, finds his man out there, and Gutierrez has it. Gutierrez makes a nice move. He's got to get down. He, he, oh, fumble! Oh. Well, we can talk about player of the game now. And that's it. Recovered out there by Brock Anderson. So Gutierrez had a nice catch, made a couple of moves, but another turnover. He and does, he doesn't understand time, you know, and, and you know, when you're a young high school player, you're a high school player, sometimes you don't think about it. You don't practice like you do in college and pro. But right there, you want to get the ball, you're on the first down, get down to the ground. Let's go. Move the chains yep. and have another shot at it. So I'm going to throw my 33% in, guys. All right. And I'm going to throw it in to how they have it listed here as an athlete. Number 22, Mr. Grant Bice for the Liberty Patriots. Do I have any objections? Kevin? Yeah, I, I think I'm going to go with you. I think, uh, um, well, yeah. Okay, thank you, Kevin. <laughs> Th thank you for your deep, thoughtful words, Kevin. Cap? Well, I, I think he was a game changer. He came with the big run, the big kickoff return, and I think we're, I'm okay with Bice, and, and he'll be our player of the game. Thank you, partner. They take a knee, and the Liberty Patriots are going to pull this out, 33 to 32 to 22, a 10-point victory for the Mustangs. I'm sorry, the uh, Patriots. A nice big win. And Brian, you know we we talk about October football and league play and what it means now to these teams. And Stockdale, 0-2 now. Liberty 2-0. Every game's big now. Every weekend is going to be big for them. But what did you take away from tonight's game? Well, tonight, you know, I thought Stockdale did a good job of fighting. They never gave up. They couldn't get some things to go their way to get that momentum to really turn for them to get the victory. But Liberty played well defensively and offensively in the second half. They had a better half in the second half. First half, they, they got a little complacent to me and had some turnovers and didn't really secure the ball. But they bounced back, came out of the half. Got the turnover right away on the, on the muff kick, and they never looked back. I don't think either team will chalk this one up to the most beautiful effort 
as far as execution, but a W is a W, and especially in mid-October. Big win for the Liberty Patriots. Our player of the game is, and we've come to the decision, of number 22, Grant Bice. He will be the Tony's Pizza player of the game. We want to thank all of our sponsors in the Kern High School District. Brian, thank you. Appreciate you being here and spending your time with us, and uh, it's been a great pleasure. Kevin, thank you for all your time tonight as well. And next week, Ridgeview at East, another big football game. Have a great weekend. Good night. God bless. Good night. It's wicked cool. It's, it's our new aviation class. It gives kids a chance to break into the industry. There's a lot of careers in aviation. This class is a lot more than just flying planes. We've learned so much already. We've learned how to take off. We've learned instrument flight rules. It's something everyone can do, I think. And you see, remember that horizon? Try to keep it parallel to your cockpit. After the two-year program, they're going to be able to take the knowledge test for their private pilot exam. I am a pilot. I've been uh, in Bakersfield for 10 years. I worked as an instructor for six years and then became a corporate pilot. And I'm a teacher here. <laughs> we have amazing equipment. Even flight schools don't have that much equipment. You put a class like this somewhere at North High and it, it's really preparing kids to succeed because it gives them a whole new set of opportunities they never knew that they had the chance to pursue. I'm proud to say that I'm from North High School and that we have administration that's willing to put the money into offering really, really neat programs like this and preparing kids to succeed.